sorry, I wasn't meant to play that. Because tonight we're not talking about Sebastian, we're talking about Elijah Vu. We're talking about this little boy. This little boy, sorry about that. I'm just so used to clicking on that link. Yes, tonight. Hi there, everyone. Come and say hello. Hello in chat. All right. I don't know if anyone know. Any, I don't know if anyone knows anything. If you know anything about this little boy, Elijah Vu, he went missing on the twentieth of February. He went missing six days before Sebastian did. Six days before uh heart oh, not harmony um Madeline Soto six days and he's still not found and everyone's been so focused on I did I was going live on this case even when Madeline went, came up missing and when Sebastian came up missing, I was still going live. But then it got to a point where there's no, no new information coming out. Law enforcement was only putting periodically something up on their Facebook page, periodically. And that was it. So I thought, well... We got two other cases here, so I focused on Madeline a bit more. But then she she was found, so then it was just down to law enforcement putting the charges up against Michael, uh, Steph, Stephen Stearns or Stephen Stearns, and then so I focused my attention on Sebastian, and that's where I've been literally for the last three months and it, I just think now we need to put some focus back on this little boy because I'm sure his family would love that the amount of attention Sebastian got if only these YouTubers could put that much attention into this little boy could you imagine and I can assure you there will not be no circus in this case. No circus in this state. No crazy trains on this in this case. Nothing. There's just concerned relatives. Not even the mother and father. Not even the mother or father. It's just relatives like the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles. Who have been going out, setting up searches, setting up, sorting out areas. Having people meet at a certain place at a certain time. Like one time in the morning, then they were set up in the front of the afternoon. So if you could do afternoons, you went and they would send you with a group of people to a certain area and things like that. And I was working with law enforcement as well. And they've had every resource thrown at them, thrown at this case. But for some reason, law enforcement won't use won't use all the resources. I don't know why this is. It's like I don't understand why they're not calling in the CUE Foundation or organisation, whatever it is, and use their resources. What is it with law enforcement? They won't call that organisation. And why? 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 You don't cost them anything. It's all voluntary. So, however, with this case, we've got a three-year-old boy, and it's a sad case, very sad case, and I truly believe we are looking at a retrieval, right? We're not looking for a little boy, we're looking for a body. And the only other reason he would be alive is if they've sold him. 
was if they have trafficked him. And I say that very lightly because the guy who was looking after him at the time, he's in a, a, this gang, and this gang or group, whatever, were apparently known for trafficking women. They trafficked, he trafficked the mother of this child himself. He used to traffic her and get money up from her for trafficking her. So what's saying he didn't traffic her little boy? Hmm? Anyway, as I said, this is Elijah Vu, the little boy on the screen, three years old. And about, round about the fourth, no, not even the fourth, I think it was round about 14th February, or 12th of February, something like that. She sent her little boy, this little boy, Elijah, to stay with this guy called Jesse Fang, her so-called boyfriend. This so-called boyfriend who years earlier had trafficked her. The mother. Right? Keep that in mind. So she sends this little boy to this guy. And... She sent him there because of behaviour issues, discipline issues. And she wanted Jesse Bang to teach him. Now, bear in mind, this is a three-year-old. To teach him to be a man. A man. A three-year-old little boy to teach him to be a man. Right. Now, when I first read the paperwork on this, it sickened me. It sickened me. I've been trying to find that paperwork again, but it's somewhere on my laptop and I just can't find it. It's in my email somewhere and I can't find it. And I'm going to try again. Right, um, let's get my emails up, see if I can find you. I know it's in there somewhere, I've just got to find it. So, Hmm. What's this one? Did you see? Yeah, well, that's part of it, but it's not what the one I'm after. Um, what's this for? Where? Um, where was it? Start, let's have a look. What's this for? Right. No, I've got that. No. Where is it? 
Only if you can whatever account. All right, here it is. Now this, what I'm going to show you is the first lot of charges she was given, the mother. And I'll only need to read the one, the one about her because I don't really need to read about him because it's the same. Oh no, this is the second, this is the second, the chronic nuclear one. This is the second, like the first lot of charges was the same as what I'm going to read out now, but it wasn't chronic, it was just child neglect, neglect of a child. Right, but then they went back and charged her with chronic neglect of a child. And let's take this off. Right, I'll zoom in as much as I can for you. And as I said, I've only need to read the one because both both charges are the same for both. Right, apart from she's got an extra couple of charges because she she lied to law enforcement and something else, right, and we're following this out now, right, there's all the state numbers, the case numbers, everything, amended criminal complaint, this is the amended one, the undersigned complainant being duly sworn states that the following complaint is true and correct, count one, Right, she's got count one, count two, count three. Where as Jesse Vang only has one count, which is this, the same as this one. Why? Count one, chronic neglect of a child. Specified harm, did, specified harm did not occur, PTAC as a party to a crime. The above named defendant on or between February the 12th, I thought it was the 12th, of 2024 to February 18th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, as a party to a crime, being a person responsible for the welfare of a child, victim child one, date of birth the 8th of 2020, through her actions for reasons other for reasons other than poverty, negligently failed to provide necessary care so as to seriously endanger the physical, mental or emotional health of the child. And the natural and probable consequences of this violation would be harm under 948.213 3, par A, B, C or D, Wisconsin stats. Although harm, although harm, the harm did not occur, actually occur, an actor is guilty of chronic neglect as she committed three or, three or more violations, violations under Nine for S dot nine four eight point two one within a specified period of time involving the same child. Contrary to section nine four eight two one five one and two, nine three nine point five oh three H nine three nine point five oh which states a class H felony 
and upon conviction might be fined not more than $10,000 or imprisoned not more than six years or both. Hmm, six years. That's the max she could get. Count two, obstructing an officer. This is the mother we're talking about. The above named defendant on or about Tuesday the February 20th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, did knowingly obstruct an officer while such officer was doing an act in an official capacity and with lawful authority obstructed officers contrary to section 946.41. 939.51, open bracket 3, close brackets, close bracket, open brackets, A, close brackets, Wisconsin stats, a class misdemeanor, misdemeanor and upon conviction may be fined, not more than $10,000 or in prison, not more than 9 months. So we're looking at 6 years, 9 months at the moment, moment okay? If she got the full imprisonment. Count three, obstructing an officer. The above named defendant on or about Tuesday, February 20th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin, did knowingly obstruct an officer while such officer was doing an act in an official capacity and with lawful authority obstructed officers contrary to section 946.41, 939.51. It's a class I misdemeanor and upon conviction may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison not more than nine. So two nines are 18. So that's 18 months max there. So that's 18 months and six years. So six. So that's six, seven. Seven and a half years. That's the max you could get is seven and a half years. Nine. Nine. Let's see what we got next. Oh, count four. Yes. I just got a count four. Neglecting a child. This is the updated bit, the, <coughs> the next part that I put on. Right, because as it said, it's an amended, because if you look back, uh, this one, it said amended criminal complaint. So this is the other part that I did on. Count four, neglecting a child, specified time did not occur. The above named defendant on or about Wednesday, February 14th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, being a person responsible for the welfare of a child, victim child two. Right, this is her daughter, the 5th, 2017. This is her daughter. For her actions, for no reasons and poverty, did neg negligently fail to provide necessary care so as to seriously endanger the physical, mental or emotional health of the child and the natural and probable consequences of this violation would be harm under 948.21. Although the harm did not actually occur, contrary to section 948.21, a class it's a class A misdemeanor, and upon conviction may be fined more not more than ten thousand dollars or imprisoned. Not more than nine months, so six. So you're looking at six, seven, eight. Eight years and three months, if she does it all. If she gets the full. Yep. Yeah. And don't forget, the longer they keep, the longer this goes on, before they get, go to court and whatever, this time that like, she's been in prison will be took off all that. So if they take three years to get this to court, you know what I mean? She's only going to be doing, what, about three and a half years. Right. Probable cause. This is the reason 
this is what they have for the um, warrants. The complainant alleges he's from, informed by reports of Megan Clumpy and known to complainant to be a detective with the Two Rivers Police Department and Detective Lieutenant Jacob Glazer of the Two Rivers Department. That the incident occurred in the Two Rivers, City of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. Based on information provided by Detective Clumping and Detective, Detective Lieutenant Glazer, Glazer, Glazer. On the 2nd of 20th, 2024, the Two Rivers Police Department, TRPD, right, and that's what I'll be saying in future, TRPD, rather than Two Rivers Police Department, I'll just shorten it down to TRPD, right? So if you hear me say TRPD, you know it's Two Rivers Police Department. Was notified by dispatch that Jesse Vang called 911 at 10.59am, reporting that he was babysitting a three-year-old child, victim, the victim. Vang reported that while watching the child, he fell asleep. When he woke up, the child was missing. Law enforcement responded to the Vang residence at 3918 Mishikot Road, apartment 102 in Two Rivers. And I'll be going on Google Maps and I will be pulling up this, right? And law enforcement responded to the Vang residence at 3918 Mishikot Road, apartment 102 in Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin, in an attempt to locate the victim. Law enforcement has been unsuc unsuccessful in locating victim child one. As of February 26, 2024. On the 2nd of 20, 24, Detective N. Columbian of the Two Rivers spoke, Department spoke with Frank. Right? At the residence at 3918 Wishcock Road, said he's in a relationship with victim child one mother, Katrina B. Barra. Vang stated that victim child one has been staying with him recently. Vang stated he was trying to help Barra correct victim child one's bad behaviours. We're talking about a three year old down. You know what I mean? We are seriously talking about a three year old. Right. Now bearing in mind, this mother, Katrina B. Barra, hadn't got her little boy potty trained. He was still in nappies. She hadn't got him off the bottle or getting him in, or even onto solids. He's three years old. Well, right. He should be eating solids. He shouldn't be just using a bottle. God, the word around is bad to go. Right, Fang stated he'd been, help, been trying to help Barra correct victim child's bad behaviour. Fang stated that he was being assisted with the care of victim for approximately one month, but not continuously. Hmm. Fang stated... Hold on. That on today's date, the 2nd of 20, 24, he woke up with his autistic teenage son. He helped his son with getting on the bus at approximately 7.30 hours. Frank stated victim child one was still asleep after he walked his son out to the bus. He stated that he woke victim child one up, child one, at approximately 0800 hours and brought him into the bedroom with him. He stated that he shut the door and Vang fell asleep. Vang stated he woke up at approximately 11 hours and found that the victim child one was gone. Vang said he then called 911 to report child victim one, victim, victim child one missing. <sighs> A lot of this repeats itself, I think. It really does. <laughs> but 
which yes, I say it has to be done like this, even though it seems to repeat itself. On the 2nd of 20th, 2024, Detective Lieutenant Glazer, Glasser spoke with Barra. Barra stated that the victim child Wang has been in the care of Jesse Wang for approximately one week. Barra resides in the Wisconsin Dells. Barra states she dropped off victim child one with Jesse Frank on the 2nd of 12, 2024, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. She intended on victim child one coming back to the Wisconsin Dells on Friday, the 2nd of 2024. Hmm. Right. On 2nd of 20th, 2024, DCI agent Neil Lofis did speak with Katrina Brower and denied that she was in the Manic Turak County area on February 16th to 17th, 2024. Detective Clumpin is aware that the pursuing where that pursuant to search warrants, law enforcement did conduct conduct Forensic extractions of Jesse Fang and Katrina Barra's cell phone after they were consensually turned over to law enforcement. Based on analysis of these cell phones, specifically location data obtained, that law enforcement obtained information that contradicted Oh, that information that contradicted oh, yeah. containing a barrier statement. Right, hold on, let me get this in for you. That she had not been in the Manic Turak area February the 15th, February the 16th to 17th, 2024. Law enforcement located messages from Vang to Barra at approximately 6.39 p.m. hours and 6.49 p.m. February the 17th, 2024, <coughs> where Vang tells Barra that he's angry that victim child Wong <coughs> Sorry. Victim child Wong overfilled his job with poop and pee and that Vang gave victim child Wong a cold shower. Vang noted that child, victim child Wong was clean but scared. You just put a child, a three-year-old, probably just roughly throwing him in the shower. You didn't say, oh, yeah, I'll help you in the bath. I'll help you in the shower. Come on. We're going to have a nice, clean, nice warm shower to get you all clean again. No, it's probably get in there, cold water on. Yeah, he'd be scared. It's three years old, you sick vile. Oh, God. Six. Detective Lieutenant Glazer spoke with Katrina Barry and she stated that Jesse Vang was the enforcer of the rules in the relationship and that was the reason for sending victim child Wang to stay with Vang. So she knew what he was like. She knew. Why? She discussed with him the limits of what discipline she did not want used. Other than that, she is fine with whatever discipline Fang enforces. She gave examples of discipline, including praying, saying he was sorry, and going over the four rules that victim child one is supposed to be memorising. He's three years old. I'm surprised he could even memorise the days of the week. You know what I mean? At no point did she admit she was in the city of Two Rivers between February 12, 2024 and February 20, 2024 or had any face-to-face -face contact with victim child one. She said she was discussing behaviour issues with Frank around Thanksgiving of 2023. Now, this, I like this bit because there was a friend that coming on... um. On a Facebook thing or something, 
or on a discussion group for Elijah Vu. And he said, Katrina told me that Bang all of a sudden come into her life two weeks earlier before this happened. Ha, what a lie. Because we now know that for the last month on and off that little Elijah Vu had been going to his house for the last month. So since January, or the beginning of February, he'd been going on and off to her, his house. And now she says that she'd been talking to him um, from Thanksgiving of 2023. So I'd like that friend to come and say, well, that is what she told me. Yeah, you got duped. You got duped there. She'd been in touch with him for a while. He was friends with her husband. She's known him a long time. Right, she said she was discussing behaviour issues with Ang around Thanksgiving of 2023. And he said she needed to try harder to stop the behaviour. It's three years old. Barra stated she wanted Frank to teach victim one, by example, how to be a man. <coughs> <coughs> right, Eliza, this is how to be a man. If someone pees you off, throw them in a cold shower. Someone really pees you off, just because you don't like the look on their face, you make them stand in the corner for three hours. Okay? That's how to be a man. If a child really annoys you, then you don't change their nappy. You don't feed them properly. You make them stand in the corner for three hours and say their prayers. Or say, I'm sorry, mummy, over and over and over again. Okay? That's how to be a man. What a load of BS. Barbara stated she wanted Frank to teach victim one how to be a man. She said the first time victim child one had gone to stay with Frank without her was in Jan see, in January 2024. Now this person who came upon this site said, now I'm going back, what, three months or more? Over three months now? That this, that Jesse, Jesse Frank had only come into her life two weeks earlier. So, apparently to him, he'd only come into her life, like, at the beginning of February. And he's got it here. Right, that she'd been talking to him since Thanksgiving, if not before. Her little boy had been there for the first time without her in the January. She said... The past week was the longest time victim child drunk had stayed with Frank without her being there. You shouldn't have been staying there. You're the mother. No one has rights to put their hands on another child. Any child, whether it's their own or not, especially when it's not their own. Barbara stated she wanted Frank to take victim wrong. Uh, well, she said the uh, blah, blah, blah. She said the past week was the longest time victim child one stayed with Frank without her being there. Detective Lieutenant Glass Glasser said while talked about this past week, she admitted she had been in two rivers on February 16th, 2024. She said she left the Wisconsin girls around 6 or 7 p.m. and arrived in two rivers late at night. Well, I know from one of the lives I've done before on this case, um, it took about two and a half hours from where she lived to where he lived. So say she left at, say, 6.30, 7, She'd get there for about nine, quarter past nine. So that isn't late at night. It's only night time, but it's not late. Late at night, I'd say, is like 10, 11. So she's getting near that time, but... Right, she saw victim child one on the couch and on the couch, but he was tired. She said she left early morning on February 17, 2024. 
she was confronted about being in two rivers on a different day and she did not admit she was in two rivers on February the 14th, 2024, for a period of time and then went back home. Now, this is what makes me think. They reported him missing on the 20th, or while well, he reported a little boy missing on the 20th. But why would she not tell him about being at the house on the 14th? She told him she was there on the, um, the 16th. You know what I mean? On the 17th. But she wouldn't tell him about the 14th. Oh, she did. Oh, sorry, I'm misreading you. She was confronted about being in two rivers on a different day, and she did admit, oh, sorry, my fault, she was in two rivers on February 14th, 2024, for a period of time, and then went back home. My fault, misread it. On the 2nd of 20th, 24, Fang consented to meet with law enforcement at TRPD and agreed to a consent consensual interview. During the course of the interview conducted by Detective Michael Herman of the Manitoba County Sheriff's Office, Detective Herman also spoke with Jesse Vang at the department prior to going to the Two Rivers Police Department. Vang made consensual statements in regards to his recent interactions with victim Charles Grog. Vang stated that victim Charles Grog is afraid of him, then corrected himself and stated that he respects me. No, he's afraid. He was afraid of you. I've got no respect for you, and I'm an adult. He stated that they put child victim here as a punishment for his bad behaviour. He's three years old. What bad behaviour? All he wanted, all the child ever wants, is attention, and love, and care. Perhaps he wasn't getting that, and that's what he was wanting of his mother. But, oh no, she can't give him the, the love, the care, and the attention. That's bad behaviour that a child would want anything like love, care, and attention. Right? They were trying to teach him how to be good here and good at home. Bang indicates that he's trying to make him understand that going home is like a privilege for him. <clears throat> it's like a boot camp. Vang stated that the victim child one was disciplined using time out. Now, this is a bit trigger warning, so please, if you want, take a time out. Take time out. Right. I don't mean go by going and stand in the corner. I mean, take time out. Go and make yourself a drink. Go and listen to some music. Go and read a book. Get your ironing out, do some hiding, anything you want, need to do, you do that. During this time, 15 child born was required to pray or say, I'm sorry, man, mommy. Van reported that 15 child born was in time out for the majority of this time with Van, as it was intended as a form of boot camp. Hmm. Uh, this is, it's cases like that make, makes me think you should have a license to have children. Right? You should have a license to have children. When I hear cases like this, and you should, and to get that license, you have to, you know, uh, certain parenting courses, and I mean real parenting courses, proper parenting courses, not just go to this course one day and you'll get your certificate. No, 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 no. Do a course for like six months in parenting. Because parenting is a lifetime. So giving up six months of your life before having a child isn't a lot to ask. Get the license first, I say. 
Vang report that was in time out for the majority of the time with Vang as it was intended as a form of boot camp. Other than getting into things, he's three years old, he'll get into everything, he'll get into cupboards, he'll get into drawers, he'll, he'll go and rummage through boxes and clothes and hiding wardrobes and you know what I mean? He's three years old. Vang wasn't able to identify specific bad behaviours, which was quite a time. Because this three-year-old didn't have any bad behaviours. He didn't. Like if someone said, I want to put your son in time out, I'd say, well, he kept throwing juice all the time. I'd give him juice and he'd throw it on the floor. And I mean, throw it all over the floor. Right? So you, at least then you've got a reason. Right, you don't want your juice, you go in the corner for five minutes. Or three minutes, whatever their age was. Right? Or two minutes. And think about why. If you don't want the juice, think about what you should be doing if you don't want this juice. You know what I mean? And then after a couple of minutes, come back saying, now do you understand why, if, what you have to do if you don't want the juice? But you don't make him stand there for three hours and not know why you're making him stand in time out. You don't. You all speak to the child after. Right. Frank reported that child victim, child wrong, is not potty trained. Now that wasn't his fault. That wasn't Frank's fault. That was the mother's fault. And that he's still wearing diapers. Rang advised that he changed victim diaper at least once per day. Give him a round of applause, everyone. This guy changed this little boy's nappy once a day. Woohoo! Sick. On the evening of the 29th, the 2nd of 19th, 2024, Fang changed victim one diaper prior to him going to bed at approximately 8 to 9 pm. Right? That's what he says, going to bed. He then watched Ready Player One prior to putting him to bed. Right. No, then he, he then watched Ready Player, Player One prior to putting him to bed. He stated that victim child one was not watching the movie as Fang put him in punishment. What for? Be all because you wanted to watch Ready Player One and you didn't, and you couldn't wait just five more minutes to put him to bed properly. You stated the victim was standing in the corner or stand by the bed by me. Bang state. He gets pretty tight. Well, yes, he's three years old. And all day he's been in time out where he's had to stand up. All day. I guess like from standing to... Hmm. Yeah. He explained he does not want to be mean to him, but he's trying to teach him to be more respectful. He was asked about February 19, 2024, if he made victim one stand... Victim child one stand... To which he replied, ah, yeah, for about probably like two to three hours. Don't you mean 24 hours? That day before, you made him stand literally for 24 hours. You know what I mean? Frank confirmed again that the child victim one stands for two to three hours without sitting. In the event that victim child one tries to sit down, Frank will say, you... Hold on. This is quite a lot to read. You want cold water. He then indicated he's fine. It's not like his knees are shaking and about to fall over, you know. Sick. Right, the morning. Van woke up at approximately 7.30 hours and prepared his son for school. Now what I want to know is, did he have his son, his autistic son, full time? Or did he have him just 
certain days of the week. Because an autistic child is not easy. They can be very stubborn. How was he with his autistic child? Did he used to make him stand in the corner for three hours? You know what I mean? At that time, I saw a 15 child one sleeping on the futon sofa in the living room. Vang told his son, took his son to the bus stop and locked the apartment door. Right. Upon returning to the apartment, Vang found Victor Child Grant still, still sleeping on the sofa. Yeah, he's making the best of it while he can because he knows once he wakes up, he's got to be standing up all day. You know what I mean? He worked with Victor Child Grant and they ate breakfast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did have breakfast. So, was he allowed to sit down then? He reported that Victor Child Grant ate some cereal which had frosting on one side and wheat on the other, without milk. Now, I'm not going to say anything about that, because sometimes my grandson don't want milk on his cereals. Then they went to Vang's bedroom, where victim child one was told to stand and pray near the foot of Vang's bed. What had he done wrong? What had he done wrong in that short time from when you woke him up, and you done it, and you done him his breakfast and he get his breakfast. What had he done wrong? He'd probably been up, what, half an hour? So he couldn't have done much wrong. He did not change Victor Charles' wrong diaper as he was too tired. Oh dear me. So that poor child had that diaper on from 8 or 9pm the night before. It'd probably be too sore to even want to sit down, to be honest with you. Victim Child Wong was not allowed to do fun things as he was in a timeout. When asked about any toys at the apartment, Fang reported that there was a, was a one toy which he received at Christmas. One toy! This toy was similar to a tool box. However, he was not allowed to play with during the week of the 2nd of 12th, 2024 to the 2nd of 20th, 2024, as he was in a timeout. When asked what happens if the timeout do not work with victim child wrong, Fang stated that he would give him an ultimatum. Fang report, reported that the ultimatum was usually, do you want some cold water? Van reported that child, victim child one, did not like cold water, but did not know why. I'll tell you why, Van. I really do. I said this before, three months ago. I wish when they was doing your, the interviews with you at the police station, and even now, if they do interviews with you, that they made you stand while they sat on a chair. Why? Right? Made you stand in a corner. And when you didn't answer their questions, they go, well, you know what? If you're not prepared to answer our questions, we can arrange for a cold shower. You know what I mean, Vang? I'd love, I'd love to have said that, being able to, for the police to say that to you. But you know what? They can't. They can't do things like that. So what makes you think you can do that to a child? He denied following through with ultimate, yeah, right, yeah, we believe that. He stated, ultimate, when asked about what victim it, he was, while he was a fan, he stated pizza, noodles, cereal, and similar items. He stated that victim and child one was still bottle fed and he was trying to get him to eat regular food. Well done, at least he was trying to get him to eat regular food. Hmm. May not have been the healthiest of food. He was unable to provide specific details as to the food. Well, that makes me wonder if he did even give him any food. Or if he just gave him the bottles of milk. Oh, 
While Wang was sleeping, he would lock the door to the apartment at the doorknob, deadbolt, and with a security chain attached at the top of the door to keep victim Zhou Wang from walking out the apartment. Wang reported that on the evening prior to victim Zhou Wang going missing, he had consumed three 12 ounce bug risers and one cyclobenzapine as a sleep aid. Hmm. So what he's trying to say, he can't remember if he did lock the door. But that was the night before. You'd already been out the door and locked it when you went out and because you unlocked it to get back in after taking your son to the bus stop. So I'm sure you would have locked it when you come back in. Katrina Bauer and Jesse Vang's cell phones were reviewed by law enforcement, including text and Facebook messaging. On February 13, 2024, at approximately 9.30pm, I wish I could get that voice thing to go on here. Hang on. Oh, okay. No, it's gonna go. No. No, it's not gonna let me do it. Okay, let's get rid of this. Hi, Katrina Barrett and Jesse Bang cell phones were reviewed by law enforcement, including text and Facebook messages. On February the 13th, 2024, at approximately at approximately at 9:30 p.m., Katrina Barrett and Jesse Bang began discussing discussing Katrina. Coming to Jesse's apartment for sex. So that was quite late. So, yes, she would have got there quite late then. But she said she left between six and seven. Jesse says that Katrina cannot see victim child one when she gets to the apartment and that victim child one can be placed in the bathroom while they have sex. What a good mother. Approximately 10 12 pm, Katrina sends a message to Jesse and victim child two can sleep in their car. This is where the other charges are coming in because they've got all this off their phone. So her daughter, she was going to leave in the car. Then at approximately 11 45 pm, he says victim child one will be put in the living room and that Katrina needs to be quiet walking through. At 12.39am on February 14th, 2024, Jesse asked Katrina to send her location so he knows when to put 15 child one to sleep. Hmm. They also discussed her stopping at Quick Trip in Manitowoc while on the way. On February 14th, 2024, Katrina Barra's cell phone arrives in two rivers at approximately 2.27 a.m. There were Facebook messages between Katrina Barra and Jesse Bang. At 2.35 a.m., Jesse asks, Katrina asks Jesse, is there a way to shut off your headlights completely? Jesse replies, no, cannot shut off, sit off completely. Katrina messages, I can't find victim Charles too. Cell phone, but a cop just passed by, so I want to make sure she's good. Victim child two is a child for which Katrina Barra is a parent of. Katrina Barra indicates victim child two is autistic to law enforcement, so she's leaving an autistic child 
in the back of her car. Katrina message. Let me find her phone quick because I need to have some type of sound of it for her. She message. Just a message. Probably think someone is warming up. Katrina is finding not worth the risk. I'll leave it off for a bit, then turn it on again. Yes, she said, okay. She messaged, she found the phone, but it was dead. And turned it on, that it was dead. She messaged she would leave her phone in the car. She questions whether to leave her phone on, but mute it around 2.40 a.m. She also messaged, it should stay warm for a bit, right? It's fine, you yeah, it will. At approximately 3.30 a.m., a photograph was taken and the GPS indicates she was at 3918 Miscock Drive, Two Rivers. The photograph shows victim child Wong laying down on a bed. Victim child Wong had blindfold over his eyes, appears to have bruising on his jawline and neck on the left side, as well as bruising on his upper left arm. Katrina Barra confirmed that she took the picture and later deleted it around 4.20 a.m. Katrina Barra's phone leaves Two Rivers at 4.30 a.m. on February 14th, according to the... Mm-hmm. I need it there, everyone. According to the weather service record, the low temperature for Two Rivers... February 14th, 2024 was 27 degrees Fahrenheit and the high temperature was 30 degrees. That isn't hot. That isn't even warm. In a review of Facebook Messenger messages between Katrina Barrett and Jesse Vang, officers located a photograph taken on February 15th, 2024 at approximately 8.24pm showing victim child Ryan standing in a court hall in diaper only. Hands appear to be in a praying position and the diaper looks full. It appears to have been taken at Jesse Vang's apartment. <sighs> the phone records further indicate that Katrina Bay returned to the city of Manitowoc on February 16, 2024 at approximately 11.01pm. She called Jesse's phone at about 11.15pm and went into a quick trip store to purchase items, which was confirmed by surveillance video. At approximately 11.21pm, Katrina Barrett texted Jesse Fang's phone um, on, but, uh, and put him to sleep. Jesse Fang responded, OK. Katrina Barrett phone arrives to Jesse Fang's apartment around midnight. At approximately 12.30 a.m. on February 17, 2024, Katrina Barrett and Jesse Brown's cell phones moved to the city of Manitowoc. At approximately 12.50 a.m., Jesse Brown went to Saucy's Bar in the city of Manitowoc and went inside by himself. This was confirmed by a patron of the bar. Their phones separate for about an hour. During that time, Katrina Barrett travelled to the Quick Trip located at 213 South 42nd Street in the city of Manitoba. Officers were able to view surveillance video from the Quick Trip store. In that video, Katrina Ball can be seen sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle. There's no child seen in the vehicle. At approximately 1.45am, Katrina is seen making purchases inside the Quick Trip store alone. At approximately 1.55 a.m., Katrina Barrett's phone travels to Jesse Vang's location and a return back to Jesse Vang's apartment in Two Rivers. At approximately 5 a.m., Katrina Barrett leaves Two Rivers. Two Rivers. On February 16, 2024, victim child two was taken, was being taken care of by a person in the Wisconsin Dells area. On February 16, 2024, victim child one was in two rivers and supposed to be under the care of Jesse Frank and Katrina Barra. Law enforcement has been unable to locate anyone other than Jesse Frank or Katrina Barra who cared for the child on February 26th. Oh. 
on February 18, 2024, at approximately 4.36 a.m. Don't they sleep? You know what I mean? Don't these people sleep? 4.36 a.m. I'm dead to the will. Well, I wasn't last night. I, was, I couldn't sleep last night. Jesse Frank messages Katrina. I told you, trust me. I'm a, I'm a make sure he hates me and being here. She responded, don't want him to hate you, just fear you. Jesse responds, it's okay. Someone had to be the bad person. Katrina message, I know, but either way, act. He can fear you and respect you. Jesse message, he did fear me, but he didn't respect me. Now I'm making him respect me. So he puts the fear of God into this little boy. First. Right. And then, because he's so scared of this guy, he's going to respect him. I'd say anything if I was a little three year old. I'd say and do anything if it meant not understanding a corner for three hours. If it meant getting my nappy changed. And being cleaned properly. You know what I mean? So, um, but that's the gist of the case, right? And uh, let's get this picture up there again. Anyway, they went to court and they had very high bonds and it had to be cash full cash payments so it wasn't a bond it was cash payment and those high so these two are sitting in jail right and i'm going to pull up some of the videos of him of these court cases Right. Uh, let's see where I went. Um, I'm trying to find one of the earlier court cases. So, I'm going to click on that. Let's have a look. Um, uh, she did have a court hearing on Tuesday, apparently, but it was short lived because her defence team asked for more time to speak with the state. <laughs> so she's literally, I don't think she was even there. <coughs> She's been charged with child neglect, but not directly in connection with Elijah's disappearance. Now, that's because they've got no proof. That, but they might have soon. I know they was looking for... Apparently, they used a friend's car. And this car, obviously, it was an older car and did not have any tracking on. And, yes, they could tell... I knew how much mileage it had done, right? Because the guy, when he got his car back, said it had gone from like 2 p.m. in the afternoon till, and this was the day before he went missing, from 2 p.m. till, was it 7? 
2 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 7, 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. it went missing. They had the car for. So they knew how long it, they'd had the car. They knew how much fuel they had used. Yeah? But that could mean they could have gone anywhere in that time. So they was putting a call out for people to look for this car and they gave the description out of the car so that if anyone's seen this car at any time on this date between these hours to get involved. They had the car, they just hadn't got new, didn't know where it had been. They knew how many hours it had been gone for, they knew how many miles had been used. Right? How many miles had been used, how much fuel had been used, and how long they had the car. So they knew all that. But that isn't going to tell them where they went, which direction they went, whether they went north, south, east, or west. You know what I mean? So they needed the public help to say, have, if, have, had, did you see this car? And they gave the colour out, a picture out of it, everything. And the first letter and the last letter of the registration. Any time between, I think it was 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. I'm sure it was 7 p.m., right? And so I don't know if anyone come back about that. But those, they weren't going to use a car where they could get truck. You know what I mean? No, maybe. Oh, I'm not using it. That's just just about her last case. Oh, what's this one? Uh, oh, I'm trying to find the court here. Let's have a look. Court hearing. Oh, this is a good one. If I can get the video up of this, this would be a good one to say. The mother had only gone back to court to try and get a <coughs> dollar bond <coughs> to reduce to what they call a signature bond, where you only have to do is sign your signature and you can walk. It was denied. <laughs> In denying, denying her motion, Judge Robert D. Wayne said there were too many unanswered questions in the case to justify granting a signature bond. <laughs> right. Oh, God, this is videos. Why can't I find, the, find these videos of the courts? Is this one? Uh, 
Uh, here's one. Oh, it's only for six seconds long. What's this one? Oh, uh, a moment. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why can't we find these? It says here, last person known to see. You know, remember what I said about trafficking? Last person known to see Elijah Vu faced human trafficking charges in 2015. Twenty fifteen. This little boy's been missing for over three months now. And the only thing they found is like one little pump, which is similar to the description that they said he wore with dinosaurs on it. And they did find his blanket. The blanket he, that you see me on some of the pictures. On this blanket here. And they did find this blanket. So. I'm trying to find the court hearing. No, why can't I find these videos? Let's go on to. No, I'm going to go on to YouTube. I might find some on there. Oh no, I'm going on the wrong one, aren't I? Oh god. <sighs> Sorry about this everyone, I'm trying to get to my original channel on YouTube. Alright. Uh Continue. Uh. Let's see if we can find. This is four weeks ago. Was this one four weeks? Now, this is a good one. Right, we're going to watch this. I will put it up. Come on. Uh, let's take this off. And then I can present. So, this is for anyone who hasn't been up to date, updated or been watching anything about this little boy. Some people may not have heard about this little boy. Let's see if we can find Because everything on YouTube, especially on the crime, true crime channels, it's not about this little boy. It's about 
all the like all the um BS that's coming along with the case of Sebastian Rogers and his mother, stepfather and father. So that's why I've sort of like stepped away as well because I'm it's just too much. So this one you get no of no, this in there. I'm just going to speed it up just a little bit, okay? Put sound on. In State of Wisconsin versus Katrina Bauer, 24 CF 163. Appearances starting in the courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline Labrie. And on Zoom. Katrina Bauer appears with their attorney, Ann Larson, by Zoom from the Manitowoc County Jail. Uh, matters on the calendar for a preliminary hearing today. Uh, I had an opportunity to talked with counsel earlier, uh, attorney Larson uh, had filed previously a motion to modify bail. And then um, I think it was late yesterday, he filed a motion to dismiss count one. Uh, my understanding after talking with counsel is that uh, attorney Labrie anticipates filing an amended complaint. And based on that, the parties are asking to adjourn the prelim preliminary hearing uh, one week and proceed with the bail motion today. Attorney LaBrie, is that your understanding as to how we're proceeding? Yes, Judge, and I did file the amended complaint prior to coming to court today. I emailed a copy uh, to Attorney Larson and the court. And Attorney Larson, that's your understanding as to how we're proceeding today? It is, Your Honor. So what the court is going to do then is this. As it relates to the preliminary hearing, in light of uh, the filings, I'm going to find good cause to toll any applicable time limits. I'll adjourn the preliminary hearing to March 14th at 10.30. Judge, we're yeah. going to do it at 11. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we'll do it. We'll we'll adjourn to March 14th at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Attorney Larson. Um, that leaves us with the bail motion then. Attorney Labrie, did you have an opportunity to review the bail motion? Judge, I did have an opportunity to review the bail motion. All right. Attorney Larson, go ahead. Your Honor, um, we are asking that the court reduce the bond to one of a signature. I would note that... Um, Ms. Bauer is a resident of Wisconsin. She's a lifelong what resident of Wisconsin. Um, she has no serious record. She has two prior CIs of disorderly conduct and two CTs. She had no misses in the two CMs, which were in, 2000, I believe, 2011 and 2015. Um, in 2017, she had the two CTs I referenced. All, all of these were in Otagami County, with the exception of the first, which was in Winnebago County. In the 2017 cases, she did miss court. She missed court um, on June 2017, CT 236. She missed court on June 23rd of 2017. A bench warrant was issued, but on, excuse me, on June 21st, but on June 23rd, the bench warrant was not issued. Um, in 17 CT 752, there were, several warrants issued. There was one issued on February 5th of 2018. She was appointed an attorney on February 7th and the warrant was canceled on February 9th. On May 16 of 2018, a bench warrant was issued. On May 23rd, bond was reinstated. On August 14, a bench warrant was issued and on November 15, bond was reinstated. Again, that was in Ottawa County. No cash was ever ordered. Uh, Ms. Bauer did suffer a significant brain injury in 2015. I do not know if that contributed, but that would be my guess. She has um, some difficulty regarding dates and things of that nature. She did have a neuro assessment done. I do not yet have that, but she is receiving SSDI for that condition. As I stated, she's a resident of Wisconsin. She will not leave the state of Wisconsin. She doesn't have anywhere to go outside of Wisconsin. Um, obviously, this is a very high profile case. There's a, a, a lot of um, high emotion going on, but there's also high emotion going on with Ms. Bauer. She's been worried sick, not knowing where her son is. Um, she had been planning on moving back to the river since the Wisconsin Dells is quite expensive. Uh, I don't know what her immediate plan will be, but I would propose that she will attend court hearings with me. She has transportation. She does have the ability to also appear um, at non-evidentiary hearings by Zoom. I further assert she's not a danger to the community. Um, for those reasons, Judge, we are asking that the court amend the bond to one of the signature. Attorney LaBrie. 
Your Honor, the state is opposed to any modification in bail. As Attorney Larson indicated, the defendant in 2017 had multiple failures to appear for court um, in Outagamie County in 17 CT 752. She also had that failure to appear in 17 CT 236, as well as the two dis prior disorderly conduct cases. As far as record outside of Wisconsin, um, we don't have any convictions for her, but she does have contacts with law enforcement in 2014 in the state of Nevada, one in March of 2014 and one in April. Again, those weren't convictions, but it does show that she has had contacts outside of the state of Wisconsin. The state feels that the cash bond at this point um, is appropriate. In fact, in light of the amended complaint, I would say it may even be low. We have now changed count one to chronic neglect as party to the crime. We have also added the count four, which involves neglect to another child who is six years old from February 14th. So now she's facing additional charges with much higher penalties. Um, these cases obviously involve uh, the care of some very young children. One of the children is around the age of three, the other is around the age of six. And not only were we dealing with the defendant sending the child to uh, two rivers for discipline or the boot camp, as they described it, to make that child fearful of the co-actor so that when the child returns to her residence, he would behave better. Um, there is also evidence that on February 14th, she left the six-year-old unattended in a vehicle for approximately an hour in cold weather. Um, the temperature around that time was around probably 27 to 30 degrees with the vehicle turned off. Then we have also as part of count one, the chronic neglect on February 16th, leaving the three-year-old unattended for at least an hour as her and the other co-actor are traveling to locations in the city of Manitowoc and neither one of them are seen with the child. Um, it's clear that this defendant is facing some serious charges and there's grave concern. Um, she knows she's facing potential imprisonment, which is an incentive to flee. Uh, she also was encouraging the co-actor not to cooperate with law enforcement on February 20th. Um, she was messaging the co-actor to not say too much. Um, See that? She was the one messaging Jesse Vang to not cooperate with police. So who's the one who's in charge? As she stated, he was a disciplinary in that house. Was he or was she? Don't, don't let them, or no, don't talk, uh, ask for an attorney, those types of things. I think at this point, it's clear that cash is warranted. I would ask that the cash either remain the same or be increased. I don't think a signature bond at all is appropriate based upon the totality of the facts, the new charges, um, and her past record. Judge, I do know there is one victim who wanted to make a statement regarding bail. I don't know um, when the court would like to hear that. Right now. Okay. You're done. I'm done with my argument, Judge. Um, the victim wanted me to read their statement because of concern of reading in front of a courtroom. That's fine. Um, just uh, we'll need the name of the person who you're reading the statement on uh, behalf of. If so, if you could give me the name, spell the last name. Okay. The name is Jody. J. They. They. Uh... And the statement is, I have known Katrina Bauer longer than anyone else as I am her mother. At this time, I am asking the court to deny any bond modification for a multitude of reasons. I understand bond is not meant to be a punishment, but as an assurance to appear. While you have access to some of Katrina's records, there are records in other states, including Nevada and California, you are not seeing. She has contacts in other states that may be willing to assist her depending on the story she is telling. Her story always depends on her audience. At this time, rather than aligning in locating her son, she feels the need to reiterate what a good guy Jesse is and is fully defending him and his actions. By aligning with him, she could potentially have access to his extended family and ability to flee the area. Katrina routinely will blame anyone and everyone for what happens without taking responsibility for her actions. It goes without saying she is incapable of making appropriate judgments in everyday life, which is likely being available for future court dates and questioning. Katrina has no ties to the community. When I asked her why she would go back to Jesse, she stated, I felt alone. I can assure you she is well aware of resources available, but she cho chose not to use them. She severed her relationship with me in October of 2022, so there is no family in the area. While paper will show minimal income, there's unaccounted for income when compared to her spending. I am aware she allowed Jesse to claim her 
children as dependents on his taxes, and he gave her half the refund they received. I am also aware she receives food stamps for a child not in her care and has miscellaneous unclaimed income. In 2016, while she, while I re-resided in California and my oldest daughter was having heart surgery in Wisconsin, so I was here with her. At that time, Katrina faked a forced abduction and had missing person reports filed in California. She was located in Minnesota, where she was taken a hold for erratic behavior and drug use. Officers offered to drive her to Wisconsin and she refused to leave, stating she was there by her own free will. Katrina has struggled with depression and anxiety for many years, um, has a history of erratic behavior. She has been suffering from traumatic brain injury and is highly likely to forget mandatory appearances. I don't feel it's worth the risk to lower her bond, especially as victim has not been found and many questions are unanswered. She does not, she does need to be held accountable for what rules out in the future. And I feel releasing her, she would be a flight risk. I have been the victim on her verbal and emotional abuse for a very long time. If the court finds any reason to reduce her bail, I would like to be assured of my peace and safety with a court ordered no contact and GPS monitoring. Great. So uh, the court's primary consideration in uh, determining uh, bail is assuring the defendant's appearance in court. Um, quite frankly, I haven't seen uh, the amended complaint yet. I don't necessarily know that I need to. Um, there's enough in the complaint uh, that I feel in combination with her current circumstances that bail uh, is set right about where it needs to be. Um, and of primary concern to the court is that uh, based on the allegations in the original complaint, um, you know, her son was missing and she was not being truthful with law enforcement about whether or not she was in the area. That in combination with the fact that she, at least uh, for now, uh, has an address in Wisconsin Dells. Um, I know Attorney Larson makes reference to the fact that, you know, it's the state of Wisconsin and uh, she may have residents an opportunity to reside in Two Rivers. Um, it's certainly going to take more than uh, opportunity in the, uh, the borders of the state uh, to make the court uh, feel assured that she would appear. Um, the behavior that's outlined in the complaint in terms of not being honest with law enforcement as far as her presence goes gives me an incredible amount of concern about uh, whether or not she would in fact uh, make herself available for future court appearances. So for those reasons, the court will deny the motion to modify bail. I'll ask attorney Labrie to draft an order to that effect. Um, attorney Larson, just as a follow-up to the motion though, in the event uh, uh, she has some uh, uh, definite place uh, to reside um, locally uh, that uh, might accommodate a daily check-in that I'm not saying it would carry the date, but it's certainly something the court would consider and, um, uh, just for the sake of your discussions with your client, okay? Thank you. All right. Anything else for the record on this case, Attorney Labrie? Not on this case, Judge. Uh, Attorney Larson? No, Your Honor, thank you. Before we adjourn, then I just want to let uh, uh, the folks generally assembled uh, know I've talked with the district attorney about this so that they can communicate to the family. I typically don't allow people to wear um, shirts uh, for uh, missing people or alleged victims in the courtroom, uh, especially once we get to the point where uh, Ms. Bowers uh, or Mr. Vang is going to be in person. I have no problem uh, with the fact that people have them. Um, I understand why. And I got no problem if people want to cover them up with a jacket, but I typically don't allow uh, those to be worn um, or exposed in the courtroom. It's not the kind of thing I was going to make a big deal about today and have people removed, but I'll let you know going forward. You show up wearing the shirt, um, you'll be shown the door. So, uh, and it's not it's not for any reason other than I'm trying to maintain the temperature uh, in the courtroom here and not have people get too excited. So with that, we'll be adjourned on this case. Uh, James, who's next? Mr. Bain. Luke, while we're waiting, you had any luck uh, tracking down Mr. Craig? Right. Right, let's try and get this same 
Hey, Lieutenant Aaron, you said you're... God. Yes, sir. Greg's not in custody by you anymore, is he? We'll go on record in the state of Wisconsin versus Jesse Bang, 24 CF 162. Appearance is starting in the courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline Labrie. Mr. Bang appears in custody from the Manitowoc County Jail without an attorney, correct, sir? Um, correct. All right. Mr. Bang qualifies for public defender representation. They've been unable to find an attorney for him yet. I would note Mr. Bang has filed an application for court appointed counsel. Mr. Bang, what I can tell you is this. Um, the application is a bit premature. I have to give the public defender's office an opportunity, uh, if you qualify, uh, to appoint an attorney for you before I put the county with that bill. Um, so uh, we may reach the point if the public defender can't find an attorney for you where it becomes uh, timely for you to file something like that, and I'll let you know. But uh, for right now, that's not an application the court's going to consider, given the fact that they barely had a week to find somebody for you, okay? All right. Um, given the fact, though, as I noted, that he does qualify for public defender representation, uh, the court is going to find good cause to toll, continue to toll any applicable time limits, and we'll adjourn the matter to March 14th at... Um, Judge, do we want to put this at 11? I was going to say, uh, we'll move this one to 11 o'clock as well. Thank you. Um, anything else for the record from the state? No, Judge, thank you. Then we're adjourned. James, will you give me next? Be honest. So, because he hasn't got an attorney with him yet, there's not much they can do. Why? Why he hasn't got an attorney yet, I do not know. He is entitled to one. Public attorney. So, I don't know why he hasn't got one. He has now, I believe. So... So that was literally, oh God, the one of the first hearings they had. Well, I wouldn't say one of the first because uh, the first was their bond hearing, right? And then we had this one where she's trying to get her mother the bond decreased to a signature. Yeah, we're really going to let you walk away, sign a piece of paper, say, okay, we'll see you in March the 14th. Okay, love? Okay. Yeah, right. Tell us where your son is. You know, you're telling uh, Jesse Fang not to cooperate with the police, not to say anything. That's guilty by me. Right, um... Let's have a look at another one. Uh, is this the same one? I think this is the one. Right, and I'm going to skip. We're we'll going to record that in the state of Wisconsin versus. Right to. And about here, let's just say. You just want to use language that denies the bail motion that was filed on uh, April 19th, since Attorney Larson technically is withdrawing the other motion, uh, and we may take that up at a later point. Um, I don't want there to be any confusion as to whether uh, the denial today is a denial of that request uh, since it's been withdrawn. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, then, uh, let me just see. We don't have anything else set so uh have the parties talk about what you're looking to have set as far as the next date if you want an additional uh, uh for the proceedings deadline i dare say that's what you're looking for here yeah and i'll start i guess with during free judge there is a significant amount of discovery that we have provided to miss larson um i believe it was provided to her on the drive last week i don't know how long she's going to need to go through that discovery during larson what are your thoughts as far as uh, setting the next date. Right. She's the one they've just said in that last one where she was telling Jesse Frank not to cooperate with the police, not to tell them anything. Tell us what, sweetheart. Tell us what. Yeah. 
You do realise they can prosecute without a body. Hmm? We've only got to get enough circumstantial evidence and maybe a good witness against you. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So, but I just wanted to, it's like, I think it's on this one where you see her face when they say the bail, the, the bond is reduction is denied. I'm sure it's on this one. Uh, I can do just a shade over that. I can do uh, May 22nd at uh, 2 30 or 4. Yeah, I, I'm out of the office that week, but if it is only just a status, I could appear by Zoom. Judge, if the court has something available the following week, that's fine. Um, four o'clock on the 28th. That works for the state. That's fine. All right. So we'll set a status conference by Zoom then for four o'clock on the 28th. Uh, Attorney Larson, are you going to want... Um, your client made available for that, or are you anticipating it's just going to be the court and the attorneys? Um, I think it'll, I, we're fine with just the court and the attorneys. All right, real good. Uh, anything else for the record today, then, from the state? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Larson? No, Your Honor, thank you. Then we're adjourned. Right, right. It obviously wasn't that one. But her face, when he denied, denied she was not, she, no, she has not shed a tear. Sandy, she has not. She knows where that little boy is. But like I said, I've just read something where in 2015, Vang was up for some for trafficking. Now, how do we know women in jail with her are talking? Are they? I haven't heard nothing. I might try and message one of the family, like the uncle or something, and ask them to say, look, I'm working, I'm a YouTuber, I do lives and all this lot, and I'm doing lives on little Elijah. And I followed this case from day one, because I remember when I heard it, and I thought, hold on. He phoned law enforcement at 11 a.m. Right? But it was 8 a.m. when he was last seen. And I thought that doesn't make sense. Why, if it was, if you'd seen a child at last at 8 a.m., why didn't you report at quarter past eight, ten past eight, five past eight? You know what I mean? So I couldn't quite understand why it was so long before it was reported to police. And then when these records come out, the papers, I thought, hold on, you went back to sleep. And you're telling us that you've got a, a bolt, you lock your door up by bolt, you've got a deadlock on the deadlock bolt on, and a chain which is high up. Now, I've got a six year old grandson, and he's now managed to, he couldn't do it at first, but he now knows how to get the key, uh, the door chain off, and he knows how to undo the deadlock bolt. So I'm looking at putting another chain on the door, right? Because I only have the chains on when they are there. I don't have the chains on any other time, just in case my son does need to get into me, right? He's got a key to get in, and if, he, if I've got the chains on the door, he can't get in. Well, he will, he'll just kick the door in. But I'd rather he didn't do that. But... It'd be interesting to hear what these women in jail are saying. Hmm. She knows something, and she's sick. He's sick as well. Right. 
and This was four weeks ago. Apparently, this was streamed three weeks ago. I think we should bring in, you remember in the, uh, oh God, in the times when it, you had like uh, the kings and whatever in charge, yeah? And if you did something wrong, if you was a woman and you'd done something wrong, you got tarred and feathered. I think we need to do this. We need to have that backing. Tar and feather the cows. People like tattoos nowadays, don't they? Especially people like her. Tattoo her forehead. So people can see as she's walking around. You know what I mean? I don't care about civil rights, people's rights too. Not when there's a child missing, I'm sorry. When there's a child missing, your rights don't come into She's got the four missed court appearances 
including one of them being a plea hearing on August 14th of 2018, where the warrant was authorized and she didn't return until several months later. Um, she has shown that she's got the inability to make court dates with those missed court appearances, as well as um, she has the four prior cases. She does not have local ties. The address that I was provided. So she was denied before on her bond. Yeah. And now she's back again going for the um going for a signature bond again. Why? 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 Why don't you just get on with the flipping case? Right? Just set a date for court. And then while she's in prison doing a, hopefully they're given a maximum on every count, but I can't see that. I can't see that. I can't see her getting the maximum. Even though she should. Just go to court. You've got, the, you've got enough evidence to take her to court for what? Those charges. Stop this pithering about. You know she's going to go to court, so stop pithering about about getting a bond down to the signature because this is just time wasting in my eyes, right? And take her to court because at the moment she's in Manitoba jail. When she gets sentenced, she'll go to prison. One day she gets on in prison. Either way, if she got if she got her bond reduced, if she got anything reduced, she'd still be going to flipping prison. But I can't there's no way she should be let out on the streets. No way. Literally a minute before the hearing is not a stable address. Um, I won't say what it is, but it is not a stable address. It is in Manitowoc County, but I don't Think it is an appropriate placement for her to reside. Um, she has no other contacts. My understanding is the family is primarily out of Manitowoc County. I don't feel that there is enough stability with the proposed location for this to be modified to a single job, especially with the seriousness of this case. I think cash is still appropriate. Uh, furthermore, as far as the second part of the request um, that was filed regarding the lifting of the no contact, uh, I received that last night. I did contact that county this morning. I was informed that that matter is still pending, that they were unaware of, that this request was going to be made until I called them this morning. And at this point in time, they are not in favor of it. Um, they haven't really been in communication with her recently. So at this point, they are not supporting that request. And we would ask that that second request also be denied. And as I indicated before, Judge, I know there is at least one Blue family member that would like to make a statement. All right, I'll get them in just a second. I was I'm going to ask Attorney Person about uh, touching on the uh, part of the motion, the amended motion that dealt with uh, contact with minor child. So, uh, Attorney Larson, go ahead. Judge, um, we have different information that Ms. Lavery has, but I appreciate the fact that I only filed the motion late yesterday afternoon. So, what I would propose would be to um, withdraw the motion for today and refile to give the parties time to get information so that the court can make an informed decision. Okay. And uh, uh, so the member of the victim's family that wishes to make a statement, and all I need you to do right now is unmute. Uh, I'll be able to tell uh, who it is that wants to speak. Okay. Uh, the panel marked as Orson Vu, uh, unmuted. So uh, first I need you to state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yeah, uh, Orson Vu, O-R-S-O-N. Not the uncle. All right. Go ahead and tell me what you hear to, sir. Your Honor, we are asking that the court deny any, any request by Katrina Barr to reduce or modify her current bond. She is the mother of Elijah and is the main reason for all of this that has happened. She's allowed Elijah to suffer in the abuse and neglect that he went through. And seeing her baby with all bruised up and not doing anything to help him and instead taking a picture and then deleting it is absolutely disgusting. Katrina needs to be held fully accountable for a lack of care for Elijah. And until we find out where Elijah is or what happened to Elijah, her whereabouts and availability needs to be known at all times. And there truly is a concern from everyone, especially our family, that she will be a flight risk. And we, we trust that the court will make the right decisions and give Elijah the justice he deserves. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, so a couple things. First of all, uh, since Attorney Larson is withdrawing the portion of the motion dealing with contact with minor child court uh, for today's purposes, um, we'll address that. Um, and as far as con uh, excuse me, as far as uh, amending the bond goes, um, you know, it's difficult to gauge this case on the scale with the uh, the prior kinds of cases uh, she's had. On her record, um, they're not the same. Uh, this would be an entirely different situation if uh, the child in question were here. He's not. Um, you know, and I don't know what that means in terms of you know the context of this and uh, the long taking a long view of, of the case here. Um, but it, it's a significant factor. I mean, she's charged with. Uh, you know, party to the crime, uh, neglect of the child, and the child is missing. Um, she's not from here. Um, you know, and as far as the local address goes, whether or not the state has concerns with it, um, she could have what could be considered by anyone to be a solid address uh, in this county, and it really wouldn't make that much difference in terms of uh, the weight I give it as a factor. Um, what I consider in this case, uh, it, and, the other thing is this, I want to touch on this. Um, it's difficult to attempt to manage this case uh, and, and the request for bail um, like we would normally. Um, you know, Attorney Larson mentions that she'd be willing to comply with uh, uh, a daily check-in at the jail. Um, the reality of the situation is that would defeat the purpose of sealing her proposed address. Um, for anyone to think that she could go anywhere in this county and not be followed by someone. Um, I don't think you're living in reality. And, you know, at that point, you know, there's no control over uh, what might happen. Um, and that's not to say that, uh, you know, I think she needs to be kept in, kept on run as set uh, for her safety. Uh, it just means I don't necessarily have control over it. I don't know, um, you know, were it to set a daily check-in um, if I didn't feel safe going to the jail to check in, um, I don't know that I would. And then I end up back here having to deal with that. And that's not a situation I want to find myself in. Um, the reality is there's too much at stake. There are too many unanswered questions. Uh, that all goes on the scale and leads me to believe that uh, if she were released into the county, she would uh, pose a significant risk of not appearing for court um, when scheduled. I don't at this point think there's uh, a manner in which I could um, reasonably and appropriately control that. Uh, through the use of bond. So for those reasons, the court will deny the motion. I'll ask attorney to redraft uh, the order. Um, and I guess attorney will read for the sake of uh, the order. Um, if you just want to use language that denies the bail motion that was filed on uh, April 19th, since attorney Larson technically is withdrawing the other motion, uh, and we may take that up at a later point, um, I don't want there to be any confusion as to whether uh, the denial today is a denial of that request uh, since it's been withdrawn. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, then uh, let me just see. We don't have anything else set. So uh, have the parties talk about what you're looking to have set as far as the next date. You want an additional uh, uh, further proceedings deadline, a status conference, whatever you're looking for here. And I'll start, I guess, with attorney Brady. Judge, there is a significant amount of discovery that we have provided to Ms. Larson. Um, I believe it was provided to her on the hard drive last week. I don't know how long she's going to need to go through that discovery. Attorney Larson, what are your thoughts as far as uh, setting the next date? So it's given the fact that she's in custody and then we'll be unable to um, post. We're going to need to work on this as quickly as we can. I'm going to ask for a status hearing in two weeks. Uh, let me see what I got. I can do just a shade over that. I can do uh, May 22nd at uh, 2 30 or 4. Yeah, I, I'm out of the office that week, but if it is only just a status, I could appear by Zoom. Judge, if the court has something available the following week, that's fine. Um, 4 o'clock on the 28th. That works for the state. That's fine. All right. 
So we'll set a status conference by Zoom then four o'clock on the 28th. Uh, Attorney Larson, are you going to want um, your client to be available for that, or are you anticipating it's just going to be the court and the attorneys? Um, I think it'll, I, we're fine with just the court and the attorneys. All right, real good. Uh, anything else for the record today then from the state? No, Judge, thank you. Attorney Larson? No, Your Honor, thank you. Then we're adjourned. Hmm. So it's just getting delayed all the time and it's so annoying. We know she's guilty of those charges. You know what I mean? They've got records, they've got phone messages, they've got phone calls, they've got the times, everything. They've got GPS on their phones, they've got it all. So those charges she's guilty of. Right? So, and it's just so annoying that this mother knows where her little boy is. That blanket was found, oh, was it about three, four miles away from where he was supposed to, he was last seen? And it was found within a few days of the search when it first started, but they couldn't say anything straight away because if they, they said, oh, we found a blanket, you know what I mean? You know what it's like. So they needed to wait for the DNA and everything to come back on that blanket. And once it did, and it did take a while, right, they were able to then say, Yes, this is his blanket, and as I did say this, and um, I'm going to see if I can pull up that uh, the two rivers police department interview. Let's see if we can pull that off. Right, this was the first one I did. I think this is the one. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Miner, the Chief of Police with Two Rivers Police Department. I'd like to provide everybody with an update on our efforts to locate a three-year-old uh, missing boy, Elijah <coughs> Yu, who's been missing from our community since yesterday morning. Yeah, this was the first one. Our hearts go out to Elijah's family during this incredibly difficult time. We want to assure them and the public that we are doing everything in our power to bring Elijah home safely. I will not discuss specific strategies uh, related to the search for Elijah because I simply don't want to limit the information our community has to offer. Since the moment Elijah was reported missing, our law enforcement from local, state, and federal agencies, along with dedicated volunteers and community members, have been working tirelessly around the clock to search every inch of our city and beyond into the county. Our search and rescue teams have been combing through our neighborhoods, parks, wooded areas, and they've been following up on all leads and tips from the public. <coughs> we still have an active Amber Alert. Uh, that Amber Alert for Elijah, um, we are continuing to follow all, every, and all avenues. Elijah is a three-year-old male. He was last seen at approximately 8 a.m. yesterday. <coughs> Uh, in the 3800 block of Mishkat Road here in the city of Two Rivers. <coughs> Elijah is approximately three feet tall, 45 to 55 pounds, with brown eyes and dark blonde hair. He was wearing dark colored sweatpants and shoes with a dinosaur print. I want to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to everyone who has volunteered their time, resources, and support to assist in the search for Elijah. Your unwavering commitment to the well-being of Elijah and our community is inspiring. We cannot do this without you. 
As we continue our efforts, I want to emphasize the importance of remaining vigilant and proactive. Additionally, I want to remind everyone to please refrain from spreading rumors and false information. This can hinder our search efforts for Elijah. All official facts and information regarding the search will come from us at the Two Rivers Police Department. Let us focus on our collective energy on supporting one another and bringing Elijah home. If you haven't done so, please, please check your home surveillance and search your personal property, but also be mindful of others' private property. We urge anyone with any information, no matter how insignificant it may seem, please come forward and share that with law enforcement. Immediately, every piece of information could be the key to bringing Elijah home. Anyone with information can call the state tip line. We've provided that number, 844-267-6648, or utilize the P3 Crime Stoppers app. You can choose to remain anonymous. The Two Rivers Police Department will provide updates as more information becomes available. Again, thank you. Uh, thank you once again for your continued support and all the cooperation that we've had during these challenging times. Thank you. Now, there is a 40,000 dollar reward out in this case 40,000 so um, um, there was an interview done I'm trying to find it now. <sighs> oh god. I know there was an interview done with the uh, Two Rivers Police Department detective. And I can't find it now. So but the search the searches are going on still, but I think they now down to one once a week. I'm not sure. I need to find out a bit more information on that because, as I said, last time I'm doing anything on this case was February or March, round about the end of March. Well, even though I've been watching the case and I've been sharing anything I find on my Facebook page or my Twitter account, I hadn't actually done a live because there wasn't much being done. Uh, the did, if anyone remembers that in, that program, Making of a Murderer, right? They did actually go and search their property, law enforcement did. Hi, SG. Yes, they did go and search their property, and I'm going to see if I can find on my Facebook page. You know what I mean? Because I know I've got it on here somewhere because I share everything I see in here on to here. <clears throat> it's just that sometimes, some guys I can put a load of posts up and it. You know what I mean? And it just seems to take forever to find anything I need then. I'd like to find a quick way of punching something in your sink. Oh, I found you. Just by typing this thing. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know how. Alright, so. But, you know, it is a sad case. 
And I'd like to hear what these women in jail are saying. That I would like to hear. <coughs> right, so... I know... Um, Jesse Vang, he did get a lawyer, an attorney, eventually. And... <laughs> He literally said that it wasn't made, it, what he was saying was that it wasn't made clear to him the charges, sort of thing. And that uh, they need to do that, make it clear as to what he's being charged with, or drop the case. So within a week, within two days, they had the paperwork over to them, updated. <laughs> Think we're gonna drop this case? Don't think so. <clears throat> Come on. See, all this is about Sebastian. Now I'd like to have this filled up with other cases. Right. <coughs> <coughs> because before coming on here, I was watching a YouTuber who I, I like. And he's come out with some something tonight, and I was gobsmacked by it. Just absolutely gobsmacked from what I heard. And it has been reported to law enforcement. So, <clears throat> come on. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's because I sit here eating dry, dry roasted peanuts. So, come on. I've got to be quicker than this. Come on. So, but it was absolutely shocking what I heard. And I felt so bad for that YouTuber. And all because, oh, what was that? <clears throat> all because he wants to help find this lag. Oh, have I done it again? Have I gone past it again? Oh, yeah. No, we've seen that. We've seen that. So, it's a shame. But he, he, he spoke a lot about something today and I was I was shocked to find that out that it was Seth that said it. You know what I mean? So Oh come on. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I see it's got here. Yeah, I'm going to share it. Right. You remember that, do you? Making a murderer. Making of a murderer. Do you think he actually done it? Do you think he actually did that murder? Or do you think it was his nephew? What video? What you heard? What was said tonight on a YouTube channel? What a YouTuber said about Seth, and he's gone. The video is gone now. Yeah, I think I think he was set up. He was so set up. Oh, uh, was you watching the live? Yeah, I was watching the live before I had to come on here. And I was just, oh my God, no way. So, 
I'm not sure why he would... And I'll tell you something else as well I noticed. After the vigil is when it sort of like started going all south between Seth and this YouTuber. Right? And I thought, what is that? What's he done? What's he done, Seth, that you don't like? And now we know why. Because this YouTuber didn't do what Seth asked him to do. Ah, right. No, I seen the live thing, and I was just gobsmacked. And then you've got people pulling up their driveway, and he's going out with his gun. Oof. But that might not be Seth. That could be Chris. That could be Chris. Chris is doing. You know what I mean? And the fact that they're saying that uh, people say they stole, he stole Seth's girlfriend. It wasn't Seth's girlfriend. Hi. Seth just thought it was. He thought he was in with a chance, and he wasn't. And I'm sorry for Seth, but I think he needs to take a reality check. Because what I heard tonight on that live, I thought, oh no, you need to, you need to check in somewhere, Seth. Because apparently he's not working at the uh, police department at the corrections facility now. That's what I'm hearing. So I don't know. Anyway. Right, this is when I had to do the salvage yard. But he wouldn't let the news people in. And you could see where it all looked. That used to be full. Full of cars. Full of cars. Here it is. Right. We're going to watch this. And this is the interview, the latest interview I've ever seen. So let's see. Right. Um. It has been 50 days since Elijah. Right. That situation with his ex girlfriend in English. That's just sour grapes. But he was being abused. He was being hit by her. He's got the bruises to show that. The film, uh, you're on about uh, making a murderer. The female attorney working on the case will not take a case unless she's sure the person is innocent. Exactly. But we've heard nothing else about that since that, that was released. So I feel sorry for him. Um, but um, this is the interview. Deja Vu was reported missing. I'm your Lakeshore neighborhood reporter, Preston Stober, and I've followed this story since the day he disappeared. Now, in a market exclusive, the Two Rivers police chief tells me what they're learning from certain evidence. No matter how much you prepare, you're just not ready for it. Chief Ben Miner says his department has prioritized the search since it began on February 20th. Even if this case goes on forever it's not going to leave any of us you know there's not a day that i don't wake up and think about this case he says the massive effort involving local state and federal resources is in his words uncovering all of manitowoc county the chief says they've combed through 10,000 video files and more than a thousand tips all vetted 
to this point, there's no evidence to suggest that Elijah was abducted, and we have no evidence that he had simply walked off. And so you mentioned the statistics. Where does that where does that leave you looking? I think through research, training, efforts, um, there's obviously areas that that we're concerned with, more immediate areas than than those further outside areas. The chief didn't offer specifics about those areas, but he says they want more tips and any information could help. How long can the department exhaust all their resources in this case? Yeah, I, I don't think you can ever stop searching. That's that's the truth of the matter. The search he calls overwhelming and frustrating, but one that you can't give up on. Let's just say there was something to, to break the day or there was an answer to come. Laying your head down at night, how would that feel for you? It'd probably be the first good sleep I got. Chief Miner told me the community support in Two Rivers has been incredibly helpful, and he encourages anyone that might know anything to call their tip line. That information can be found on NBC 26th. Right. There was another interview, but I can't find it. Right, but it's basically the same thing. But at least this, this law enforcement was still working on the case, right? And even though they wasn't publicly giving out statements, up until about, what, about a month ago, they was on Facebook, at least weekly, putting out statements, weekly. Right? And whereas in some cases, as we know, they literally scaled back within a week and did sod all after that. Wait for everyone else to go out there and do the running around instead of them doing the work. They was hoping these volunteers, these unpaid people, would go out there, search this woods and the rivers and all that lot. But <coughs> I really think the police need to step in now because this is getting ridiculous in that Sebastian Rogers case. Right? And as I said, I've took off last night and tonight. And I'm not coming back on to Sebastian until Friday. Tomorrow night, I'm back on Laurie, Laurie Page. She needs the attention. She needs the focus as well. At the moment, I will not, I'm not forgetting Sebastian. Don't get me wrong, I'm not. But I'm, st I'm not stepping back. Is it normal to scale back on a leg to run away case? Of... Ma'am, this is what makes me think. I, on the Monday, he was reported missing. Right? The police had him down as a, a, run, a, a runaway. By the Tuesday, they had him down as a missing child. Yep. Yeah? By the Wednesday, something happened between Tuesday and Wednesday which made them rethink everything. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on the Sunday, they scaled back. So it's like, okay, we'll just finish this week off and then we're scaling back because this of this information we've just found out. They, found, they had some information come through on the Tuesday, Tuesday evening or Wednesday daytime for them to rethink what was happening, what was going on. But for Seth to say what he did to the YouTuber about the poo-poo, pew -poo, poo -poo, right, that is so wrong. That was so wrong, right? And what does he need a pew pew for? What would he need one for? So, so I'm glad the YouTuber didn't get that gun, the pew pew. I have to be careful what I say, sorry.
and um, I'm glad he didn't get it because if he had and anything had happened and they traced that gun back, the pew-pew, sorry, the pew-pew back to him, it's bringing him into it, you know what I mean? So, you know, but that ex-girlfriend in Indiana with the YouTuber, that's just sour grapes. You know what I mean? Just sour grapes with her. Because she was the one giving him the bruises. He wasn't hitting her, she was hitting him. So he did the right thing by doing... And now, where he is, this woman, right, offered him a room. Yeah, because they've been talking about this case, that case. Yeah, but Seth asked Trev before he moved to Tennessee, hoping that when he moved down to Tennessee, he'd bring that pew-pew with him. Either way, it's crossing state lines. Because I noticed it was after that vigil, and Trev had only just recently moved down there within like that week. Everything seemed to go haywire between Seth and Trev. Not good, no. And people are having his life saying, look, back, back off, back off this case. I'm not backing off it because of that reason. I'm backing off it because I, there's nothing coming out. And while all this BS is going on, nothing will come out. Right? I will do lives with Sebastian, but it'll probably be once, twice a week, maybe. Right? And like at the beginning of the week on a Monday, or a Friday and a Friday at the end of the week. So I might make it Monday and Friday, Sebastian's days, evening. But I've noticed the numbers drop. I wasn't getting that many coming in my chat as it was. But at least I was getting the views. You know what I mean? But I'm not even getting the views on anything to do with Sebastian no more. I'm not. And I don't know why. Well, I do, because people don't want to hear about it no more. They're fed up of it. And it's a shame because the only person losing out on this is Sebastian. Tony needs to go. Seth needs to wise up somewhere. You're over it as well, yeah? You know what I mean? I can't do with the BS because the BS is stopping any new information coming out. As I said... What I might do is, because I know Tian is still out there searching, and she just put YouTubes out. Only after she's finished searching that area does she put her chat early YouTube video out. So I might do um, a live once or twice a week. Yes, Seth has changed drastically. It could be desperation now. Look, I want answers. And I don't know. But none of what is happening or being said is helping find Sebastian. These threats are not helping find Sebastian. Right? I know there's a YouTuber going down this weekend. But he's going down for the crime con. Right? But he's also going to have a little scout around the area. So, but he's only going to cover the case now if anything new comes out. Because he don't want the BS. He doesn't. So everyone's backing off this case now because of the BS. Now, Seth, if you're listening, 
I know this isn't about Sebastian in this video, but if you're listening, if you get to hear this, wise up, man. Wise up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because what was it Seth said when he was talking about Tony at the beginning? He said, Tony said to me, you need to come off YouTube, right? And he said, do I? He said, yes. So he's come off YouTube. So what does uh, Tony do then? Oh, he goes on the internet, but he goes on TikTok. Oh, it's okay to go on TikTok, but you can't go on YouTube. No, Tony, you're building up your channel through Seth. Right, and that's not on. Right, I'm not building my channel up through Seth or Katie or Chris. I still think them two got are guilty as feck. You know what I mean? But my channel is about missing children. My channel is based on facts. And at the moment, the facts are telling me no more information is coming out because of all the BS. But someone did say, if you're watching that live today, you probably heard something talk about that person who messaged him saying the reason why they wouldn't tell Seth about the case is because they knew, if he knew what, what was happening, he would go after someone, yeah? Because as a father or a mother and I found someone, I'd be, yeah, I'd be doing that. And then that's when the YouTuber said that message made sense to him. And then when he mentioned about the pew pew, I thought, yeah. That's why he wanted the pew pew. Because he'd found something out. I don't think it had anything to do with... Um, he reckons it was to do with the girl, the woman he's now living with. Because at first, they was just friends. She offered him a room because he needed to get out of where he was living. And over time, it got it built up to something more than just friends. Fair dues. Good one. You know what I mean? Good on you. Right? But there's an old saying, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with BS. That's what, yes. Yes, that is so true. But you see, we've said for weeks now, Tony's been putting out the incorrect misinformation. And then he has a go the other night about another YouTuber who was in hospital. Because this YouTuber said something about Seth. I can't remember what it was now. I'm sorry, but you don't have a go at a YouTuber who might have to go under the, under the, uh, onto the operation table. He didn't, luckily. Right? But he's in hospital. And he's having a go at a YouTuber while he's in hospital. So, anyway, I wasn't going to talk about that tonight, but we are. But this little lad, here, yeah, I'm going to pull up his picture again. This little lad. We've got no, we've got no BS on this little lad. Right, oh, you saw that live? Mm. I was just gobsmacked by that. I thought, I know they can't get to me, I'm in the UK. And I'm only a small channel. I'm not in the big, I'm not in the big leagues. But hopefully in three, three years time I might be. You know what I mean? But three to four years time I could be in that position. 
but I'm not going to use Keep Going Live on a case when there's no info. Like, this little lad here, he is adorable. And we've got no BS coming from this apart from the parents, apart from the mother and the boyfriend who won't talk. Right? So, they just need someone to come forward. There's a $40,000 dollar, $40, reward here on this, on this case. But anyone who comes forward with information leading to the arrest or conviction of whoever involved in this case. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money. You'd think someone would come forward by now. But perhaps money isn't enough. Because don't forget this fear. They could be scared of because, yeah, you could send that guy down, yeah? You could send that guy down. Yeah? You could go forward and say, yeah, I've got information, I can send, I, I, you know what I mean? But can the prosecution protect these people from the gang members that this guy is member of? That's the problem, right, is a, is in a gang, it's not boys, it's men, they probably have got some young boys in this gang, wannabes, you know what I mean, but it's mainly men, and I know, I heard that Jesse Vang's brother was above him, higher than him, in this gang. You know what I mean? So, would the prosecution... They'd have to go into witness protection if they went up against that, that, that guy. Because as I said, yeah, you could send him down, but you got, he's, got, he's got his gang members who aren't in prison. Yeah. Um, hold on, I'll see if I can pull a picture up. Find a picture of him. Um, because there's a tattoo on his neck. Get uh, up. I need a clear picture of his neck. That's, is that the best one I got? Surely there's another one. Mm -hmm. Right, let me save this. I'll get this saved. Oh, come on. God's sake, I hate this. Right. Let me get this on here for you. I don't really want his picture on here, but I will. Just for the sake of this case, I will. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. Hold on, let's take that off. Um, see that tattoo there, right? We was looking at that at the beginning, and we're not sure if it's a nine to you or it could be the area code where they live. This county code, you know what I mean? Like we have area codes in the UK, like in Birmingham, my area code was B twenty four. And if you lived in Aston, in an area of Birmingham, and their code was, I don't know, I 
101, right? That's their, that's their gang name, right? 101. And they use the area codes. Um, and I believe this is part of the gang. Remember. Right. My husband was a jail guard for witness protecting in Cook County, Illinois, before he became a Cook County Sheriff Police. They disbanded witness protection while he worked there. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, he's part of a gang. So you could send him down. You could have someone come through and say, yeah, I know, I know exactly what happened. Right? And send these two down for life. Yeah? But then they've got to protect that person. Because it's not him then he's got to worry about. It's the gang members outside. And as I said, I'm not sure if that little boy is dead. He could be, they could have just trafficked him. Sold him. They could have sold him. You know what I mean? But you see, they can't afford to say, oh, we sold him, we trafficked him. Because they're going to want to know who to. You know what I mean? And then that's coming into the big names then when you say, well, you trafficked your son, you sold your son to this trafficking gang. Who? And then if they say, oh, well, we, it was such and such, they're going to have them. They're, they'll have uh, a death thing put on them, a hit put out on them. Even in jail, they get a hit put out on them. It is by the FBI, though. I'm sure FBI still do protection programs, witness programs. Yep. So they can't, even, like, remember what she said? Yeah, don't comply with the police. Don't talk to the police. Don't tell them anything, right? They can't afford to tell us where their son is because if he's been trafficked, they're going to want to go, okay, who did you sell him to? You know what I mean? And they can't afford to tell them who they sold him to. So, and because there's no sign of this little boy anywhere, nothing. The only thing they ever found was a little plimsoll, and I'm going to sh pull up on Google Maps, right? Google Maps. Right, let's go to Google. Uh, what was the address again? <coughs> <clears throat> oh God, get this up. Um, I'm trying to find the address. Um, oh, where was it? Oh, it was on uh, one of these uh, pieces of work, wasn't it? On the email. I'll go into the emails again. And, oh, three, nine, I'll go it now, I remember it, I remember it. Three, nine, ten, three. Right. Just had to think, as soon as I think of the number, I know the... The address thing. 
Right, so let's go to here. Right. But I was watching a video the other day and everyone on this video she kept looking at these houses, these places here. Right, I'm gonna show you if you're not ready already seeing it, yeah you know. Alright, so let's get this off here. I don't really want them on there. Let's present. Like she kept showing this where this house as his house. And I sat there thinking, no, babe, you're so wrong. You're so wrong, it's not there. Right? She kept saying it was here. And she was focusing around the back of this building. I thought, no, 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 no. This is where it was. Here. Yeah. Road. This is where he went missing from, and I believe it was round here somewhere. Round here somewhere, they found the little dinosaur pump right the little dinosaur pump that he was it was said to be wearing so it was around here they found that and then apparently they f found some other stuff right i'm not sure if they found it at the back right or round by the bins, right? Round by here. But they found some by some bin area. And then they didn't say what it was. And I think that's what led to them doing a search at the landfill. But again, they weren't there that long. There wasn't, there's there one day for that. You can't do a search of a landfill. In a day, you can't do it. The FBI agent, the retired FBI agent, even said that about the Sebastian Rogers case. But this is where we went missing from. Yeah. Right. And. So basically, no trafficking area, open area is easy to see. Well, actually, it's, I don't know how busy this road is, but it's like the main, like, if I come, if I go into this part, you'll see what I mean. Let's close this. All right. You'll see it's like a, one of the main roads into, you know what I mean? Goes all the way down here. All the way. Right, let's come on. So it's like one of the main roads all the way down to here. And you can come all the way down to here and then turn to get to that, to wherever. You know what I mean? So it's like one of the main roads in and out of two rivers. See what I mean? It goes all the way up here. Right. And then you've got another main road over here. That goes straight down to that junction there. See? And there must be a bridge or something here. Yeah, there's a bridge there, you know what I mean? So you've got two roads that go straight in and out of two rivers. Two direct routes. Easy escape route. Yes, yes. So, 
It is an easy escape route. And this is why until they find a body, I will say, and I'm sticking to my thing here, I think he's been trafficked. I think they sold him. I really do. It's like people's going, well, could the, he could be in the river. Right? Now, I live in the UK. And we have a lot of cases where people go missing and they're found in rivers. A lot of cases. And if you look, this is very bendy. Right? They did a search up here. They did a search up here. And that's like a little dam. I'll take my little man down there and I'll plonk him right there. Right? <coughs> no, the other way. The other way, aren't you? It's like a little... See what I mean? It's like a little weir, a little weir dam. But you can see, but they've searched all up here, right? All down here, they've searched all these rivers. But you can see, like, hold on, I'll see if I can zoom in a bit. How shallow. <coughs> and how bodies could get, a body could get caught up on these rocks, right? Look at all this in the river. So, you got that. And it widens out here. And I know they did, uh, they had search parties here. Right? And they had this, and this is like all marshland here. This is very marshy. Oh yeah, I'll see if I can... Get you up there. See what I mean? It's very marshy around there. But they've been searching all this area. Because a little buggy could get caught up in the river. So... But like I said, that's very marshy round there. Round there's very... And it's very twisting. See here, if you look at a map, right? See these, like, little dots, like a shaded area. Like, like, uh, sandbanks. Yeah. It's like where the... It's l lower in the, uh, water. The water isn't as deep there because it's like so the buggy could get caught up in these areas. And they said, Oh, but he could have traveled down this river. And I'm thinking, Hmm, don't think so. I think his buggy would have shown up by now. This was in within three weeks of him going missing. I've said the buggy would have shown up by now. And it twists and turns. It could get caught up on these corners. You know what I mean? If he went this way, he could get caught up around here on these bends. Right? Because a body won't necessarily go with the flow of the river. It goes. Well, it does go with the flow of the river. But if he's, the body's over here and it's floating down this way, right? It could get caught up on the banks, or if it's coming round this way, close to this side, it can get caught up. Anyway, so you get down to here. He manages to get all the way down here, right? But then down here, I'm going to show you, highlight another obstacle that this little boy has got to get past. As again, you can see all this 
stuff here, right? But look, what are these? Yeah, the mooring yards, the boat yards for boats to moor at. So the body's got to get miraculously past all these boats, not be seen, not get caught up in any of these areas or any of these boats, right? And it's quite a big area of it. Look, you've got trees overlapping, you could get caught in there, right? And then you've got the river coming out of here. You've got this east twin river here. You've got this river here, the west twin river, meeting up to here. That could actually swirl the body around because you've got water coming this way, you've got the water coming from here. You notice how this water is very muddy compared to this side. But this side's got so much more to stop a, a body getting through. And then it could get through. It, if it gets past all that, it's right out here then. It's into, what's this river called? I can't think. <coughs> I'll find out in a minute. <coughs> it like Michigan. Yeah, like Michigan. Michigan. So he's into like Michigan. And I'm sorry, but he's got to turn up somewhere because it's... Look, if it's in there... Right. There's no exit here. There's a possible exit here. I'm not sure. Yeah, possible exit there. You could get through here. Right. <laughs> Into this part of Lake Hurang. Right. But once again, it. There's no exits. So the body's going to either get caught up in Lake Michigan, which is a flipping big river, lake, or somehow miraculously get past all this lot and float all the way up here and get into this area. Or even get past all that lot and then get past here into this little area. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense that is in the river. There's too many too many obstacles. Right? In my opinion, if he's he'd have been found, yes, there's too many obstacles for him to get down that river not not be found. Unless he's weighted down. Right? But it's got to be in a pretty deep area to be weighted down. So I don't think he's in the river or rivers. I seriously am now thinking he's been sold. They sold him. And that's why they're not saying anything. Because they know they do. Well, A, they won't say anything because I go to prison for life. But B, if they do, they've got um, a death penalty, a death wish on their head. And they will take them out in the prison. Someone will get to them in prison. You know what I mean? Because they can't afford to have them to tell anyone who they sold him to. They cannot. He's worth a lot of money to a trafficker, yes. He is. And that's my thinking. I might just be way out there. <laughs> I might be way out here in my thinking. But I don't think he's on land and I don't think he's in water. And I think if he is alive, he's not alive for long. And I don't think we're going to find him anywhere here. Well, I don't think we're going to find him anywhere here.
Vamos a... I don't think it's anywhere here on here at all because this area has been searched and when they are searching they are knocking down high grass so you know what I mean they're not just walking through it they are knocking the grass down flat they are searching everywhere now you look at this area that I've had to search and they have searched Hold on, I've just got to plug my laptop in. They have searched. Right, they've searched all over here. All up here. They've searched. And they are still searching, to my knowledge. They are still searching. So, it's a shame. Trafficking is big in the US. Yes, I know. It's, it's quite big in the U. It, well, I say it's quite big in the UK. I don't know. What I do know in the UK is we have a lot of um, foreigners, right? And they come to the UK and they start a business. And it's normally a takeaway, like a, a fishing, a chippy and kebab shop and things like that. And they entice young girls in by giving them a free meal. And then they give them a, oh, you can have that meal for nothing. Oh, you want a drink? You can have, why don't you come in the back with us and have a drink? Have, have your drinking meal in the back with us. And then it's like, well, we gave you all, this, all these meals and all these drinks. What about you giving us something back? And they've got them hook and line and sinker. Right, and they trap, they move these children, these girls through city from one city to another and whatever. They don't kidnap them; they bring them back home, and these girls go back home. But as soon as they get a phone call, they have to go. They have to leave their house and go to them. We had a big case over here in the UK about it all years ago. Big case about it. TBI rescued 50 kids in two months in Knoxville from trafficking. That's a lot. Of, yeah, that's a lot of children. That's a lot. And if you think... Yes, years ago it was photographers saying they do models. Yeah, yeah. Now it's... We're, they bribe them with free things like we'll give you a free meal and whatever. And that's how it worked. That tell us getting the girls over here in the UK. And in one area, the police was turning a blind eye to it. Police were, the parents were going to the police about it, and the police were doing nothing. Nothing. Tell you why. Hi. I put some on top of my laptop and it just kind of like, Fum, you're out of here, you're not having that. Oh, John, I'm just sorting it out now. It's the sound now. Because I took myself out. It's the sound. Oh, John. Oh, God's sake.
Right, I'm, am I back? Yes. No pick, no sound. Am I back now? I had to go back out again and come back in. Right, oh, what am I doing? Nothing. Cancel. Right, I hope I'm pick okay, sound okay. Thank you. <laughs> right, I've just got to get onto my Google Maps again. But no, uh, that's how they do it here. And it's a shame. So, anyway, the reason the, some of the police department wasn't doing anything about these uh, guys who was trafficking with the parents, about parents, for the parents, was because... They didn't want to hurt their feelings because they were of a certain race. Right? Because they was not English and they was of a certain race. They didn't want to offend them. But it's okay for these people of a certain race to... Um, to uh, lure, induce and bribe our girls, our children. And then once they've got what they've got and where they want, traffic them from one, one time to another. You know what I mean? But they didn't want to hurt their feelings. Don't know if you have that problem in the US, but we do in the UK. I remember once, right? Uh, there's a woman. I didn't specifically work with her. I wasn't in her department. I was in a totally different department. And she did not... Being politically correct to allow harm to children, yes. But she did not like me. I don't know why. And to be honest with you, I didn't care because I hadn't, she wasn't, I wasn't in uh, her department. She wasn't in control of me. She couldn't tell me what to do or, or where to go. She couldn't, right? But her attitude towards me, like, Sometimes I said, why she'd look at me? And I said to her partner who worked there, I was talking to him one day in the bakery, because I, well, I was doing something else in the bakery, and he's doing his art in the bakery. And I said, your missus, has she got something about the English? He said, no. I said, well, she definitely don't like me. And I've, I've hardly ever said two words to her. You know what I mean? But she definitely don't like me. And then, as we're talking, he's doing his job, I'm doing my job. Both still in different areas, you know what I mean? Different sections. And she stood there at the door and she's seeing us talking and the look we was getting off her was, if looks could kill, I'd be, I wouldn't be here today. Then there was another guy where I used to stay at a friend's house. Right. And um, he come round one day because my cat had been in his garden. Right. My cat was only a small cat. And he was putting out on Facebook that this cat was homeless and not being fed. I mean, is he for, see, is he for real? He knows that cat where it lives. He knows it lives there. He knows it gets fed because he hears me tapping the dish every night to call the cat in. Anyway, one day he's come around and said, yes, your cat's been sitting on my car. Every night your cat is sitting on my car. I went, what time on the night time, please? Because I always call my cat in at 7 o'clock at night, between 7 and 7.30. Right? I tap the dish, he come running in. And then that was it. He was in for the night. And he said, oh, about 
half eight, nine o'clock. I said, well, it's not my flipping cat. I said, because my cat is in, in here, curled up on my bed by that time. Right? No, I know it's your cat. Right? And then he's come round again, and you know, my cat had a cat little, um, had a cat little tray in the bathroom, which we kept in the bathroom. Was it in the bathroom we kept it? Can't remember. And so that when he was in on the night time, he could go in there if he needed to. Not that he ever did. He never used him. Right? And um, he said, you need to teach your cat where to train him to use a cat little tray. I said, well, actually, I've got a cat little tray in there, and he does know where it is, and he does. He d he was known to use it on the occasion. He was known to use the cat little tray, right? But not very often. I said, so he knows where his cat little tray is. And he said, I'm going to report you to something wrong with that. I said, go ahead. Go on. Go ahead. So we went to the housing, and <laughs> and it's the first time I'd ever, ever done this, and I just wanted to do it just to see what their reaction would be. And uh, because cats have a, a free room, because you can't control where a cat will go. So it's called a free room of a cat with cats. They can go anywhere they want. You can't control where a cat goes. When it's outside, you cannot control where your cat. Oh, you can't go in that garden. Oh, you can't go in that garden. You can't do that. Right? So we went to the housing about it, and they told us. So don't worry. There's nothing you can do. I said, well, I'm sorry, but I think he's racist. I think he's got something against the English. And this woman's racist. No, no, no. I'm sure I'm... I can assure you now, nothing's going to happen. I said, you sure about that? I said, because I am English. Right, I said, no, 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 we won't let that come into him. I said, well, you see us English, we don't like people who are racist towards us. Because we're not racist to let anyone down in England. Some are, but 90% of us aren't. Right? And... Um, she was going, no, 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 no. I'm okay then. But I just wanted to throw that in there to see how she'd react. And it was, oh, no, no. Uh, we make sure that nothing like that would ever happen. It, that he'd get thrown out. They wouldn't even listen to him. I mean, I knew that anyway. I'd looked up the laws and everything before I'd even come here. But, you know, um, they are, it's like being politically correct to allow harm to children, yeah. And it's wrong. And it still goes on, I can assure you now, it's still going on. And I was going through the list of missing children in the UK. Right? And a lot of them are young, young teenagers. Some are boys, some are girls. Right? I'm thinking, you, we need more information on these children than what they just put out there. Because I do that, I do a live, well, I'm going to start doing videos rather than a live on a Wednesday afternoon. I'm just putting a video up then. And it's about missing children. Children who don't get hurt, whose voices aren't heard. But we don't get enough information because they're not being focused on when they first go missing, right? Like Sebastian Rogers and Elijah. you got a lot of information on these two cases, yeah? But there's a lot of cases where children have gone missing where we're not getting any information because it wasn't there wasn't any news reports put out about this child going missing. There wasn't any searches put out for this child going missing. So it's really hard to find information on these children. And it would help a lot if we knew what 
what their home life was like. What did they like going to school? Was they having problems at school? Was there anyone at home outside in their social life? Was they having any problems outside? Like, was there any bullying or anything like that going on? You know what I mean? That all helps when you're coming down to look for a child who's gone missing. But we're not getting on with that. And even in the UK, we don't get on with that. You just get the name, the date they've gone missing, and that is it. Thinking, really? They're just a name and a, a date, a number, really, in your books. That's disgusting. So, but I seriously think a lot. This little lad's been sold. Because on the day before he went missing, they had a car. They borrowed someone's car who where they had no tracking of that car. They had no GPS or anything on this car. Right? But the owner of the car came forward and told police that he had borrowed them his car. Yes, so many little details that are important and we're not getting on with you. So, and then, anyway, this guy's come forward and said he borrowed him, borrowed Katrina and Jesse, his car. As I said, it had no tracking on. It was an older car. It had no tracking. Very wise of Jesse and Katrina to borrow that car. And he said they had it from about 2 p.m. till about 7 p.m., I think he said, or I'm not sure. And he told them how long they had it for, how many miles had got been used, and how much fuel had been used. But that doesn't tell them what direction they went in. You know what I mean? So they, they had the car, right? And um, they put a call out for anyone who could, who could come forward and give them information on seeing putting eyes on that car, they, had, they gave out the first letter of the registration and the last letter of the registration. And I was asking for people who could, who could come forward, give them information, I'm putting eyes on that car between this time and this time on this date. I don't know if anyone did. Right, so they had like from 2 p.m. till 7, you know, about like five hours. How far could they get, like, they've got a taking time with that distance there and back, so they've got, like, two and a half hours to drive. They could have met up with someone outside of Two Rivers, handed him over. That little boy's got to go with whoever, because he's too scared of just Jesse. He's scared of him, so he's got to do what he tells him. If cases is like reality, so... People are interested. That's what I'm not seeing. Yeah. A lot of people, like some of these YouTubers who go on these YouTube channels and watch these YouTube channels, they like the drama. They like the drama. I don't. So this is why I like to stick to the facts. And I won't... I won't entertain drama. I will not entertain drama on my channel. I, I did get, I was on that crazy train for a week, about a week or so. I was on it, but I jumped. I jumped off that crazy train. And I won't have it again. And that's like another YouTuber said today. He's still going to cover the case of Sebastian. He just don't want the drama. And he's getting all worked up yesterday because he found out about, what well, Tony, Tony, as he calls him, Tony Brows, for eyebrows, right? He calls him Tony Brows, had said about another YouTuber who was in hospital. And he was, he was not happy. He's quite angry about it. 
Yeah, I know. I swear to God, I I don't know why, but I was watching. There's two channels that I've been watching, and they've both been having a go. One has a go about one YouTuber, and another one's been having a go about another YouTuber. I'm thinking, really? Really? If I want drama, I can I can go and stand outside and see drama go on all day long. You know what I mean? Walking to going to my city centre and I'll see drama, something kicking off. If I want drama, I can just do that. I'm not gonna sit here and watch drama unless it's on a TV program, a drama TV or whatever. Then fair enough. But on a YouTube channel, no. A profiler was talking about mean women. Where? On YouTube. So, I don't think, oh my God. I don't want that. I really don't want that. And it's, I'm thinking this could force these two women to shut their channels down. Would that make this uh, this other group happy then that they've managed to get these two women off YouTube? Oh, Pat Brown, yeah. I haven't seen any of hers for a while. I'm going to have to have a look at hers. I haven't seen any of hers. She's very good as well. I do like her. But there's so much nastiness. Um, and this, like I must admit, these two channels that are having a go at these two other channels, two other YouTubers, those first two channels, they're not in the crime community. So saying there are three women on YouTube that are being smeared by women, three women, I know two women. I don't know about a third. I'm going to have to watch that now. I'm going to have to find Pat Brown and watch her. I know two women. I don't know a third woman that have been smeared by, by another woman. Who, who could be the third woman? Oh, God, I can't think. Because I haven't heard nothing about another woman. I've only heard two... Two YouTubers and they're both having one YouTuber's having a go about one woman YouTuber and the other YouTuber is having a go about another woman YouTuber. So it's all wrong. Okay, they're not in the crime community. But I don't like channels like that who just are there to gossip and have a go at other women. Pat Jennifer. Hmm. I don't know. But I'm going to have to look at her. Go in and have a look and listen to what she's saying. Because honestly, it's like being at school. You know what I mean? When you've got the, this one group of girls, or don't like them ones over there, the mean girls at school. Oh, yeah, Pat Brown, Jennifer Coffindale. I know, she's the FBI, Jennifer Coffindale, isn't she? Isn't Jennifer Coffindale the ex FBI age woman? I'm sure it is. But I know two YouTubers are getting a shit put out about them at the moment. Because they're digging in. Like today, they went back and was looking at this one YouTuber's first ever YouTube live she put out. They're not having a go at her, are they? Didn't think that she was one of them. 
I like her. So, So I'm going to have to look at Pat Brown now and see what she's saying. But I know two. There's two. And I'm sorry, but everyone who's covered these uh, Summer Moon Utah Wells. I'm going to have to go and watch it. I am. I'm going to have to go and watch it, SJ. But any, anyone who's covered the Summer Moon Utah Wells, right, they have made, they've all made money off that case. All of them. Right? And, but it's like telling, it's like telling, they say, you shouldn't make money off a missing child case. Well, when the time comes where I can get monetized, I won't have any lives monetized. So when you're watching me live, you won't get any adverts. But if you watch on replay, then those would get monetized because I'd have adverts put on them. Right? And... I'm sorry, but some like some cases we work on, I can be on here. I get up normally about 9, 10 a.m. in the morning because of my medication that I'm on. And I can be on here from 12, 12, 1 p.m. to right up to about half an hour before I'm due to do a live. And I, I'm still... And even then, I'll be going through the Facebook pages. I'll be going through anything, typing in names, anything to pull up information, to get information. I'll be going on this one site where, where hopefully I could get, like if there's a trial going on or someone's being arrested, I can get the information off that site, right? So it's not like, oh, we just sit here and we just pull up videos on TV. I have tonight, I've done that tonight, but nine times out of ten, all that information I showed Greg earlier at the beginning of this, I literally had to go on to find a site where I could get this information and get it downloaded, right? So it's not a matter of, oh, well, I've just pinched this off something else, no. I'm having to go on sites, and some sites I can't, I'm not allowed on because I'm not in the US. I'm not allowed on some sites, so it's very hard for me to get information on anything. I'm sorry, but there's one YouTuber who's going to pay three grand, three, three thousand pounds, dollars, sorry, three thousand, was it three thousand? Yeah, three thousand dollars to get the police cam, police video cam, of them uh, going into the, I don't know if you've heard about the case, of the YouTuber who's up on charges of drug use and neglect of their children. You know what I mean? She's going to pay $3,000 to get the video cam, which is going to be heavily redacted. So I don't think you're going to be seeing a lot. So for that, I will get off Cork TV or places like that because you know they're going to get all that information. Right? But it's costing three. I thought, there's no way I'd pay that money. I'm sorry.
And then she goes, I don't like to do this crowdfunding to raise money to get this. No, you just mentioned how much it's going to cost. So now you're going to get the big people sending you the money in. You know what I mean? So that you can get the $3,000 together to get this all this video cam. You know what I mean? And I hate that. Time to, it's okay to give airtime to get a child's face out in the public. It's the same as the news station. So getting paid is okay, but some, um, yes, some do milk the case. Yes. It's not reporting, it's counter assassination. Yes. Some are milking the case, really. You think the milk, the cow, you think the cow would have been dried out by now on the Summer Moon Utah Wells. People, I keep getting people asking me to do, do a live on her. But I don't want to. You know what I mean? Because we haven't got nothing on her. The facts of the case is this little girl went missing on, was it June or July? I can't remember, June. And we don't know what happened because we weren't there. We've got only what the mother is saying that within two minutes, of her taking, walking her door across this little dirt, dirt path from the grand's house, from the grand's caravan over to their shack. Within two minutes of her going in that house, this little girl's going out the back doorway and poof, gone. That's it. That's all the information we've got on that case. We've got nothing. It's a bit like Sebastian Rogers. We've got no other information. And there's so many people being dragged into this case who lived up on Ben Hill Road. You know what I mean? Like, are they part of the child going missing? Have they got something to do with this child going missing? We don't know because we weren't there. The facts of the case is this little girl went missing from off 110 Ben Hill Road. The parents say she was abducted, but there's no signs, even CAG or whatever they call themselves, that association that come in, said no signs, nothing to say she was abducted. Law enforcement said no abduction. FBI, TBI, everyone has said no abduction. So what was it then? Right? They've got enough on uh, the mother and father to have them for child neglect. So why haven't they? Right? They've had three years on this case and come up with nothing. They're not even looking no more. Law enforcement and TBI are not even looking on that case no more because they have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. The only thing they've got is the possible child neglect charges, which they're not. They're not even doing that. They're not even pressing charges on that. There are too many other children that deserve coverage and it's not fair a couple of children get 99%. Exactly. Exactly. This other children and that's what we've got to start doing. And that's what I'm going to start doing. And but on my other channel, I've done lives, but I'm going to start doing videos because I think it's not even that, because I can't get the information about all these children that I want to talk about. I can't get all the information. Like I said, we've got nothing on their family, nothing on their schooling, nothing on their social life, nothing. We've just got the name, their heart, their, their age, their date of birth, the colour of the hair, the colour of the eyes, their height, the weight, and the guy that went missing. That is it. And a picture. That is it. So that's all I can put out. But I thought if I do a video, right, I can put more, I can put a lot more in within half an hour than I can if I go live. So I'm going to start doing videos for that channel and just putting a video out there. And if need be, do uh, one which is like five minutes long like a short about 
one percent instead of like all f I've got like five children, I can do a short on each one and put that out there just to highlight that child as well. Because as I said, because there's no reports, you know, news reports, you know, searches going on for these children, there's nothing out there for me to talk about. So Drama is driving Summer Wells and Sebastian. Yeah, it's not just creators' fault. The women who subscribe to these channels and watch them are the reason creators keep doing. Yes. Yes. So, I just don't like how that one YouTuber is getting a lot of hassle at the moment. And he's, he's packing. He's packing. And I don't want him to come to that point where he's got to use that. You know what I mean? I think the police need to step in now. Because people are being threatened. So, but I've got to do something. Anyway. I might actually put a video out tomorrow. What day is it tomorrow? Thursday? Is it Thursday tomorrow? Yeah, either tomorrow or Friday. I think I'll do the video tomorrow, but put it out Friday. Because that gives me time to work on it tomorrow then and get the video just how I like it. Right? And I'll do another one for my other channel. So the description, the link is in the description. So if you want to catch up on those, look in the description. It's, uh, Voices for All Missing Children is called. And the link is in the description. Go over and subscribe. Because these children do need to be heard. Their voices need to be heard. Anyway, I've been on here over three and a half hours now. I will keep up with this case if I find anything else out about this case. It's mainly court cases we're hearing now, right? But as soon as I get anything else, I'll do another live on this little boy. I might do what they call a short. I start doing some shorts on these children, as I just said, so that it just singles them out and gets them out there. Thank you, SG. But, you know, I'm going to go. I need to take my medication. I need to go to bed. Do you know, I didn't... I went to bed last night. I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. I got up again at, I think it was 1am this morning. And I sat here watching TV all night. Honest to God. Then I looked out. The sun shot. The sun was coming up. I then went to bed about... I went to my bed about, what, 8 a.m. I got about an hour or so in bed. Then I was up again. I thought, this is ridiculous. And I had my medication as well last night. It, it just was not kicking. It was not kicking in. But I have times like that where it doesn't kick in. And then I have other nights where I take my medication and within half an hour I'm, I'm falling asleep. So I'm hoping tonight, I'll have my medication tonight, and I'm hoping that within half an hour, I'm falling asleep. Streaming on my TV, internet was out, so thankful. Rest away. Rest easy. Oh, okay, Necro. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for all, everyone watching who was here, who have all died off. So thank you, and I'll see you all tomorrow. It's Thursday, so what are we doing? To oh, yes. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go back to... Yes, I want to go back to Laurie Page tomorrow because I've got the phone call. It's on another YouTuber's page, but she said we can use her video. So I'm going to show the video, the phone, listen to the phone call from the father of Laurie Page. Okay. So, anyway, thank you, everyone, for being here. If you're watching on replay, thank you all. Please give this channel a like, thumbs up, hit notifications all. That way you get a notification when I do go live. 
or when I put a video out. So thank you again. Good night.